Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Good Strong Hands, specifically a campaign called The Blank Page, um, which is to say we only have a little tiny bit of the story that we've figured out, the characters and a little bit of how the story is going to start, what it's about. Um, and we're going to create all of this together, the five of us playing, along with um, some of you in the audience who are listening, uh, viewing live via Twitch. Hopefully there's, uh, there's a few of you. Um, I haven't actually checked to see what the chat looks like just yet, but um, yeah, we're playing Good Strong Hands, um, which is a darkly fantastical game um, about uh, uh, fantasy fantasy creatures, like you know, whimsical type creatures who uh, live in a lovely world called Reverie, um, and it's generally peaceful and, and wonderful. But every couple of centuries, um, a thing, a faceless entity, a terrible uh, formless uh, uh, force known as the void uh, comes in and tries to destroy reverie uh, and heroes must rise up to defeat the void and among those heroes um, are the four characters that my four players here will be portraying um, so let's do a real quick round of who you are and what uh, who you're going to be playing um, and then we'll spend some time getting to know um, the characters a little bit, and we'll have a little role play, and we'll kind of see some relationships develop, and then uh, at some point, the void <laughs> will start doing its thing. Some evidence of the void will uh, come into the story, and we'll take off, and we'll see if our, our heroes can save Reverie, or at least fight back the void um, so uh, it doesn't destroy anything. So uh, let's go. I'm going to go right down the list that I have in front of me, <laughs> which doesn't help any of you. But Liz, who are you playing? Um, I am playing uh, Juniper Junie Luton, who is the pixie. Um, and what's Junie like? Uh, uh, Junie is uh, incredibly mischievous, fun-loving. Um, she likes to... Uh, Pull pranks and cause minor bits of chaos, um, but she is also fiercely, fiercely protective of the people she considers to be her friends. So, does she pull pranks on her friends? Oh yes, that's how that's how you know that you're like in is when you wake up with spiders in your bed. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Next up, Paladin Hulk that your online persona name many people might know you from uh, other streams that you play that you've played in um that'd be nice <laughs> you don't have to if this is the first time you're seeing my face hi i'm paladin hulk i'm a twitch moderator for random tuesday little red dot and the star Wars initiative and today i'm playing sparky and he's an imp uh, <laughs> i'm pretty new to this world and you know what's what it has that's cool plants you ever see one of those things it's awesome but they don't they tell me that they they grow but they don't grow when you're looking at them so but you have to forget and then come back in a few months and then boom it's twice the size there's also a lot of misconceptions about them like that they need water but i tossed one in the lake and it didn't do nothing so <laughs> um so when you say sparky is relatively new is he very young sort of <laughs> no i'm just new like all of the imps are kind of new to this whole world Okay, so in our world of reverie, imps are kind of new. Okay, um, let's, let's all keep a note of that. Um, so that means your characters may not have met many imps. Um, that's one of the things about Good Strong Hands in the world of reverie is that we will sort of build that world together. Now, all of these folk, these types of creatures that they're playing are part of the world, but they don't necessarily have to have a, a, a long history, a storied past. Uh, so it looks like imps are uh, brand new, and we might find out where they came from or how they how they got here. That'll be interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, Huna, tell us about Hi, I'm Parsley Snippet, and I'm ready to take on this adventure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of this big family. I think there's like 11 of us. And one of us has to be really, really observant of things. And, you know, it's not that bad in this big world. Um, Parsley is about, I'd say, like average rabbit height, 
maybe the one of the smallest in her run of the group. And uh, she's a uh, she she loves adventure, but once fear and like the unknown is presented, she is very hesitant because she's she she's all uh, I would say that she was brought up with the with the rules of nature being engraved into her that she has to follow some sort of a guideline and anything new might just be a little bit off her game, but might as well try. Sure. Um, I now I apologize. I I was paying attention, but I was also typing something to the chat. I want to be just make sure we're clear. Did you mention what parsley is? Uh, parsley is a, a rabbit. I'd say a, by look, she's a, a tan um, American uh, rabbit, more of like the southern uh, area um, visual representation. <laughs> um. So it's just your generic rabbit that seems to be a little bit more observant than the rest of her family. Uh, I feel as if uh, being a paragon herself, she may be somewhat knowledgeable of her um, her life and um, her role. But then again, she's a rabbit, so who knows? <laughs> All right, we will learn more about Parsley as we go. Um, Allie, who are you playing? I am playing Aguilaria Oud, which I'm actually pretty proud of that name. <laughs> uh, she's a woodkin, uh, uh, tall, willowy woodkin, as it were. Uh, I don't really know much that, that much about her yet. I'm still kind of, I have this weird tendency to discover the character as I play the character. So other than she has family ties, um, she's got a big heart and will defend those that she considers to be part of her family to the end. Uh, I don't really know that much about her. We'll find out. Okay. Um, uh, anybody in the chat? Um, I threw a question up there. Where does the story begin? Um, I, we just want to kind of set the stage. Um, it needs to be a place with a good source of fresh water. Um, and my players know why, because we, we know a little bit about what the story is going to involve. Um, and not winter, because that kind of throws things in weird directions when it comes to water sources. So mm -hmm. if you have a suggestion, feel free to throw that up there. Um, just keep in mind, like, fantastical, reverie, wonderful place with all sorts of fantasy creatures. Um, but otherwise, it can kind of be whatever you want to suggest and put, put out there. Um, the... Uh, uh, Let's, let's do that while we're waiting to see if anybody throws in on that. Um, for my players, uh, we've already established that the imps are a relatively new people. Um, are there any other truths we would like to define for this world? Just kind of general things about the world that we can expect to hold true kind of wherever you go. Um, and these can be sort of any sort of fantastical thing. Like, in, in, I'm, I, as examples that I've seen when I've run games in the past was there are no roads um, so everybody walks on trails or kind of cuts through, you know, w wildernesses and stuff. There's no, there's no like paved or you know, like kind of pre, pre uh, determined roads. There's other um, truths that have been where there was like there are no large cities. Like there's nothing that's like a taller than a two story building. There's not like big metropolis kind of places. It's all very pastoral. Um, uh, it could be you know like what the sun looks like or how many moons there are or um, what the seasons are actually like. That those sorts of things as well. Um, I think I like the idea where none of us are playing humans that, I mean, we're all pretty like small folk. Um, per, perhaps the idea that humans are almost like a myth. Um, we know they exist, but it, you know, nobody's seen them in generations or, uh, you know, know, for, for, you know, we don't know where they are. They're out there somewhere. There's human relics from the past that we yeah. stumble across. They're sort of the the uh, boogeyman. There's a Statue sure. of Liberty on the beach at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Monkeys running around, running shit. So, yep. so humans are available in the game, and they're typically, like, they come from Earth to Reverie. That's the setup for it, because this, this game is very much inspired by think, movies like Labyrinth and... and uh, mm -hmm. um, um, 
uh, the never-ending story with with human characters that come over from Earth. So, like perhaps uh, there have been more humans here at one time, but they've they there haven't been many at lately, or you know, at any at all lately. So they're among certain generations and younger folk. Um, they're just stories. Um, so um, if at some point we introduce a human, that becomes uh, who knows what that might become. Let's do this. Um, uh, you know, what does um, what, what's a what's a commonly held misconception about humans? Like we know what humans are like, right? We know what we can kind of assume humans to be like when they come to Reverie. Um, what's this the thing that like because they're le- they're they're myth they're the kind of mythic? What's something that like is clearly not what humans are like, but everybody thinks they are? Uh, I I would. Think that through partially hearing about humans, uh, uh, they would tell stories of how big and disgusting, <laughs> how monstrous they are. Uh, maybe tying in twist of how uh, humans can be in nature, but in a way that uh, if if you come across a human. Uh, whatever form they have or whatever they try to present to you it's, it's just a lie they're a monster just run away I mean there I don't see any lies there <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah like they're gigantic and even to for example the woodkin um that you're playing Allie who's you know human sized or perhaps even taller maybe a little shorter maybe a little taller but you know not like a little bunny rabbit um you, yeah. you your belief might be that like you know humans are 20 feet tall <laughs> Because that's the size of the buildings they made. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. else would you make a building Obviously that tall? Obviously, they got to be tall to make buildings that tall. And they're yeah. loud. How are they loud? I'd say and that they have loud. a rep for destroying the environment. <laughs> we want to... That's not how humans are at all. Um... No! No, no, no. <laughs> so... So, so, so... Okay, so, so playing off of uh, that idea, maybe there's sort of the myth that, like... Um, humans literally cause destruction in their wake and you know when you come across an area that has seen like plant death it's like oh a human must have walked here <laughs> ah so there's a there's, there's almost a, almost a magically destructive quality to yes them. Like if they you if they, t- if they touch a, entertainment. if they touch a plant, it might wither yes. some. Not gonna lie, I may have watched Fern Gully to prepare for this. <laughs> that's also a good, good one. Plan. Yeah. That's, a, so... that's, that's a great pixie. There's that's perfect. Yeah. So there are uh, folk rituals to appease the humans, mm-hmm. and that's putting on plays and dances and all that because mm-hmm. entertainment's the only thing that calms them down. Fair. Okay. Do we have any other hum- any any other truths that we want to uh, involve that aren't specifically human oriented? Because now we have to have a human at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, this is this is uh, we just... have walked ourselves into that one <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Entertainment calms them. Um, any other any other truths? And we can we can always uh, introduce these sorts of things later in the game as well. We can just decide that mm-hmm. oh, this is how there's something. As long as it doesn't, um, and we can retcon them. Like that's not true. That's just uh, you know. Uh, okay, we can come commonly back to held that. belief. That's All right. Well, we let's see. We didn't have anybody um, bite on the question of where we're going to get started. So who wants? Does anybody uh, among the players just want to help us set the stage? Where are we starting? We need a we need a we need a good source of fresh water. Um, and uh well since we're trying to avoid the winter why not a spring festival at a clearing in the forest meant for festivals waterfall yes with a lovely pond with a waterfall i like that all right um so to set the stage The Waterfont Festival um, has begun. It began today. You all arrived um, in your own way, whatever that might be, and we'll get to how your characters know each other in a moment, um, to this uh, this pastoral clearing um, in the Briarwood, um, so named because uh, the edges of the wood 
are you actually have to kind of make your way through these briar patches. No matter where you come into the wood, you have to get through these briar patches. They are, they're, they're intended to sort of keep the forest safe and to keep interlopers from without from gaining entry. So it's always a little bit of work for anybody to get inside. Um, but then once you're in there, it's a lovely place. And you're at this water font festival because there is, uh, so, and that is so named because there is a, uh, a waterfall that um, springs out of um, a rocky outcropping that's kind of in the midst of this clearing. So the, it's, it's not a river that comes from elsewhere and then falls and continues. Um, there's this massive waterfall that kind of comes out of the rock. So what, how the water feeds up there, it doesn't make sense because it goes against gravity if it has to get up and then co to come back down. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a lovely um, waterfall. It's one of those where you could walk underneath it where the mm -hmm. water has carved out some of the rock behind it so that you can can't actually get behind there. There's a pool in front of it, and the water's rippling. Um, and uh, there's this spring festival going on that um, is um, attended by a variety of folk um, of all various types. Although, Sparky, you note that you are the only imp here. You don't see any others about at this moment. Ah, um, nuts. And there are there are people who have brought um, wares to trade um, at the festival. Uh, no, there's there is currency in the world, but no nobody exchanges currency at the at the festival. It's very Burning Man. Everybody brings things that they give or trade um, to everybody. All I else. have is stock options. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so there's there's like you know people showing off all the lovely things they've made and they're trading and giving them away to people and it's it's happy and wonderful. Um, there are little plays that people are putting on where just like a group of people are gathered over here, um, and a, and they've got a little crowd of maybe twenty people that are walk, um, watching them perform this very short one act play. Um, there are singers, um, and they're all being very respectful of one another and they're keeping those like activity centers those those locations where there's more noise kind of spread out. Um, and the, the, the constant of the waterfall can be heard as well, which helps to kind of mask sound. So it's one of those things where um, you kind of have to get relatively close to one another um, to be able to be heard at a normal speaking volume. Um, and nobody hears shouting because that's going to disturb um, the different performances and things that are going on. So... Um, we all know a little bit about your characters, and let's let's set the stage with the characters. Who, who, who knows each other? What are your relationships like? We can kind of work these out. Um, you can offer a suggestion if somebody wants to rebuff that and go a different direction, or offer something else. We want everybody to kind of be happy about it. We don't want you to, like, if somebody says, "Well, my character is romantically involved with that one," and uh, we don't that may not be something that both of you want to do. Although, if you do, I have no problem with <laughs> romantic um, re uh, entanglements. Um, but there can also be rivalries and old friendships and you can be strangers and or maybe you've heard of each other um however you want to set things up so i just want to learn a little bit about how all of you know each other um if i might make a suggestion i think judy would have like a, the first time meeting parsley been like sort of transfixed like, oh my God, it's a rabbit that talks and it's like my size. Can I, can I like use this rabbit to my advantage? Um, but slowly sort of developed a, a bit of a friendship, even though Judy won't really admit it. Um. <laughs> as long as she likes the, the partially, it's, it's, it's okay with me. Um, and I think Judy seeing this imp which like totally confuses her because it's not a pixie um would definitely be up to making mischief i think i have set fire to some of aquila's stuff <laughs> not realizing that it belonged to her i could see how that would happen I like fire. Yes, and, and as a tree, paper is one of those things that we just kind of have around. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, you know? There's so many flammable things here. I used to come from a place where there was nothing but rock. After stamping out fires, he gets pat on the head and sends along his merry way in case he tries to light anything else on fire. 
Um, so I think, so the pixies, I mean, they all flitter and fly around mm. and I think their sort of form of celebration is like a, like a ribbon dance sort of, um, so that they're making, you know, beautiful figures in the sky and Junie is going to like, oh yeah, I'm over here. I'm over here and slip away and make her way over to Parsley. Um, Hey Parsley, how's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm just passing out parsley, you know, to anyone that needs parsley. Would you like some parsley? Um, yeah, um, um, I'm okay, thanks. Um, did you see the new guy? There's a new guy? Her, her ears just perk up. She's like, like, instant alert. Like, new, new guy, where? <laughs> um, Junie would, like, flitter up to her head and take her hands and like turn Parsley so that Parsley looks directly at Sparky. And I'll be in the audience looking at a puppet show <laughs> and I'll be nudging the, 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 the thing next to me. Hey, you know, I don't think that guy's real. I think he's, you know, an object and not one of them real objects that we also have here. I think he's an actual object because I see strings and that thing over there that's actually real, that doesn't have any strings. What do you think? Oh, you're a garbage can. Okay. <laughs> um, Parsley, you should totally go over there and offer him some parsley. Well, well what makes you think that's a great idea? Um, I mean, aren't you supposed to be like um welcoming? Uh, yeah. My family did sign up for that part. Yeah. <gasps> I'll watch from over here and make sure um, everything goes okay, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> and Parsley reluctantly goes over to Sparky with a bouquet of Parsley as a, as a welcoming uh, bouquet. Oh, it's a little animal. Hi there, little buddy. Uh, hi. Welcome. Oh my god, it talks. Uh, yes. My name uh, is Sparky. Do you have a name? Uh, my name is uh, Parsley Snippet. I'm here to welcome you to the festival. It oh, seems thanks. like you've been enjoying yourself with uh she she looks over to Sparky's companion, the garbage can. Seems like you've made yourself well acquainted. Here's a here's a complimentary parsley for for he being here. I thought you were parsley. Uh, Did I get your name wrong already? Ah, I'm such a terrible friend. Uh, this is what these plants are called. They uh, they make your breath smell nice. Huh. And your name like, was? Parsley. Now nah, I'm getting confused. I thought that was the plant. It's the plant and my name. Oh, so you named the plant after yourself. That's good thinking. That's how you spread fame. So what, what's the plant for? Breath, uh, you said. Yeah. Okay. You have an okay breath. Here you go. Why don't you try chewing on some? Neat. And I'll just... Oh, this is new. Oh, it tastes like something. Um, what? Uh, I don't know. A plant, I guess. I've ate a few of them and some are good. I yep, guess you have to keep good. trying. Uh, you have to maybe double check what you eat first before you put it in your mouth. But uh, you know the big ones, the, the the really big ones, you should not eat those. Uh, they got this uh, this really tough skin, and it makes it makes it really tricky to get to the good stuff that's inside. Uh, hearing how Sparky is his logic of getting into new things is just making partially a little bit bewildered it's just like sure sure i'll just try anything and see how it goes uh yeah and then how you live life you just you know see what all the hubbub is about everybody's got cool stuff what, what about you? you you said everybody got cool stuff what's your stuff I got this lantern, and he has uh, an iron collar around his neck with uh, a chain on it, 
and from the chain hangs a very heavy lantern, which is currently off. It's like kind of stuck to my neck, though. So. Like an like an oil lantern. I th think there. Well, I don't know what would make it light up, but that's the shape it takes. Okay. <laughs> um, there's there's magic in this world, so it, I mean it, it right. could be something. The thing magic. that actually makes it light up is is me. But... Uh, I got you. I, I think at that point, Judy would be like, "Why why haven't we learned anything yet? Like, what's going on? What's going on?" Um, and she will sort of flitter over and stand behind Parsley and just like squint her eyes at Sparky and be like, so what are you? What do you mean, what am I? What are, what are you? I mean... Also, I think you should ask me who I am before you ask about what I am. No, no. Um, I mean, like, I'm a pixie and she's a rabbit and I've never seen one of you before one of me what um this oh an imp i think that's what we're called now yeah i'm an imp uh-huh now you can tell because uh, we got these long arms and we're sort of gangly yeah but only because we choose to be and we got horns and we're yeah. sort of reddish do you use them what, the are horns? they like for decoration to like hang coats on or something no, I, I, I mean, don't have a coat. Do you have a tail? I do have a little tail. Look, and I'll, I'll wag the little impy tail. Wait, <laughs> does it not? It doesn't move on its own? I just did. Did, did you not see? I'll do it again. Oh, OK. OK. Um, can you, can, you, can you fly? No. I oh. mean, not like this. Oh. I mean, you have wings. How do you expect yeah. me to fly? I don't know. I told I told you. I could jump. I'll jump and laugh and clang. What can you do? This is the first time we're meeting someone like you. So, like, what makes him so great? Uh, I mean, I get to be here. That's pretty great, right? This is yeah. a cool place. It's okay. We c we can change shape. I don't like to do that though. This is a good shape. I'm, I think I'm gonna stick like this. Huh. Although I do like the pixie shape. That's a good one. I mean, I mean, it's the best shape. Yeah, I can <laughs> see why you would like it. You know, flying. That's pretty great. Uh -huh. Also, you know, you're a lot smaller than everybody else, and that's that's got to be good for like hiding. And... Hey, who are you calling small? I mean, I don't know if you're small for a pixie, but you're smaller than me. I'm sorry, You're sir. You're even smaller than the bunny. I am I'm sorry, size. Thank you. Right. Yeah. You know, Parsley, um, I think I I think I hear your mom calling. Um maybe You have a mom? Oh, that's so lucky. <laughs> and a lot of, lot of like... imp world building going on here. <laughs> Um, and she's gonna I, lean over. Her, she's How gonna does somebody like, get a mom. Lean you think up your mom to will Parsley's be my mom? ear. Um, maybe this was a bad idea. Okay. Well, we've committed. Oh God, I know. Oh, I sub oh. Um. So, like, what? So, like, everybody contributes to the festival. Um, you know, the pixies, they dance, and the bunnies, or the rabbits, they feed people. Oh, man, I, um, I've just been watching all the shows. Should I be doing something, like dancing or, uh, I don't know, interpretive singing? I, I mean, uh, you have to make an offering. I don't got anything, though. Well, that's a problem. Oh, man, am I going to get kicked out of the festival? Possibly. I don't want to get kicked out of the festival. I can probably assist you with some offering. <laughs> up, uh, up walks a, 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 a woodkin. <laughs> Who plucks a couple of leaves off the end of her hair and hands them to you. All right, I'll, I'm going to be real careful not to burn these this time. That would be right. appreciated. So, uh, Junie, you can tell that when he says the word burn, uh, uh, Parsley's uh, fur kind of like stiffen up a little bit, but she she still kind of sits there composed just a little bit. A little wrinkly. 
So uh, what am I supposed to do with these? Because you know, I'm real well, grateful. I mean, but... That's ultimately up to you. You could go and spread them across the water like the other people have been doing, you know, or you could use them to decorate that bush over there. Or perhaps huh. you want to add them to the stack with all the flowers over there. I mean, this um, isn't actually, a flower, though. Is I it? mean, <laughs> um, I think I know the perfect bush that you should decorate. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll, I'll go with you then. Um, you said you said you're new here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm real new. Oh, good. Um, so there's this one bush. Um, it's got very special berries. Um, and you got to make sure that you eat just one of the berries when you leave your offering. All right. And th those are the little squishy ones, right? <laughs> All right. I, I, I've seen those. And where is oh, this good. bush? Um, it, it's over here. And Judy will lead Sparky off to um, a bush over on the side. Um, that all of the children know not to partake of because of the mildly hallucinogenic qualities <laughs> <laughs> of the berry juice. <laughs> all right. Sparky will, will follow, you know. He, he walks sort of oh, hunched over with the lantern <laughs> being a, a, somewhat of a weight. And he, mm -hmm. his arms mm -hmm. are long enough that sometimes he does one of those monkey hops. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, just one of these. Ah, those look nice. They're so colorful. Oh, yeah. It, it's so you know which ones to pick. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> but just in the <laughs> background is just like, he literally just, uh, he's just gonna put, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna watch. All right, I'm just not. one you said, right? <laughs> I don't want to be greedy. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Un unbeknownst, unbeknownst to Sparky, there is now a uh, not a crowd, but a handful of other <laughs> folk just dotted in the near area who are all kind of looking right now and watching all of this, and they see what's going on. They're kind of nudging each other, so like getting each other's attention. And so, um, there's you know, you've got maybe a dozen um, members in in this little sporadic audience. And, it is uh, not. It is not the first festival that Juni has pulled this. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It might something be how Judy and Parslet became friends. <laughs> something tells me she might somewhat be known for mm, doing this. Yes. <laughs> oh, if that's the case, um, yeah, there are um, there are now people who are exchanging, like they're, they're like they're, 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 they 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 clearly made bets. <laughs> and yeah, so they're, goods are being exchanged. Like, and and one, one person's like looking, doing that kind of motion to pay up, you know? Um, and the other person's going, wait, wait, wait. Like they're waiting to see if Sparky actually eats a berry before they pay up. So um, back to you, Spark. All right. I eat a berry. <laughs> uh, and then I'll, I'll stick the leaves on the bush mm -hmm. like this. Oh, yeah. Lovely. All right. Perfect. Mm hmm. All right, that's that's pretty cool. This is a nice bush. Yeah. So. And, so huh, now, now that you've made you. Mm -hmm. Two questions. Um, one for Sparky. What uh, uh, what does Sparky start seeing? Let's go to Sparky Cam <laughs> at some point here when this all kicks in, and just let us know when it kicks in because it may not be immediate. But also, um, Aquilaria. Um, the uh, I'm I'm curious is the uh, the giving of leaves from one's own body and then having them placed and done th different things done with them is is that a, is there a cultural significance to that is there perhaps something magical that ties into does what happens when the leaves get placed in a, in a place that's a very good question and if you want to I give that a little say... thought while we watch Sparky trip um... yeah let's <laughs> let let Sparky um, do what he's about to do because that should be entertaining and then I'm gonna get back to you because I I think it does hold some significance but I don't yet know what it is okay all right poor Sparky <laughs> Barry down the hatch <laughs> and now and now the bets the uh, now the bets uh, take place in the background <laughs> so I will turn around and notice that there's somewhat of a crowd and I'll be like uh, don't worry, everybody. I, I, I ate the berry. I decorated the bush. I'm helping. I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. Don't kick me out. I'm, I'm, I'm a good. I'm, I'm good. No, no, no. Ah, uh, uh, they're judging me. Uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, and he'll implode into the lantern, and the lantern will land on the ground, <laughs> and it will be lit. You blew him up. 
Or blue vein, one or the other. So now there is a lit iron lantern on the on the ground. Okay, so like we we see, is it clear that you essentially entered the lantern? Is that what it kind yeah, of looks like? Yeah, it goes, kind of shrinks and absorbs into the lantern, and now the lantern lights up <laughs> and falls to the ground. Um, Judy, my dear, I think you broke him. I didn't think it would. I mean. <laughs> Parsley just runs up to the lantern and is just like, what do we do with this situation? We've never dealt with this situation before. I've never seen the berries do that before. Usually, usually you just like sing and dance and like spin a little and then you, you puke rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> Aquilaria, what happens with the leaves? Um, I'm going to say that the leaves are, uh, sharing your leaves with someone else is a show of friendship. Generally familiar, but on festival days, you know, you get a little bit more familiar with people you don't know than non-normal days. So, so it was, it was, it was, it was a, a genuine reaching out. Yeah. Yeah. He was obviously confused, lighting things on fire like you do. So, a little bit of a here. Let me uh, let me be friends with you, and perhaps we can bring you some information. Because I'm pretty sure I'm the one with the most knowledge points in this particular group of people. Um. So Sparky's inside the lantern. Everybody's kind of like, "What's going on?" And you hear thump, thump. And you realize that like you, this sound was kind of in the background for a while, but the 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 the, the waterfall sounds and the and the sounds of the festival and all of you talking, um, you didn't quite register immediately with you, and you hear thump thump thump, and it sounds like footsteps, like big heavy footsteps, thump thump thump, and then walking into um, the clearing amongst uh, in the trees near the uh, right near the waterfall is. Uh, the tallest, uh, broadest um, elm woodkin that any of you have ever seen. Um, this woodkin is easily, you know, a good fifty percent taller than um, than Aquilaria. Uh, so you know, upwards of you know maybe 50, uh, twelve to fifteen feet tall, like, um, and. Uh, w uh, 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 Aquilaria, you know that this this is an old, old, old woodkin um, who is very, uh, very tall and is near to the time when they are going to root themselves for the rest of their lives. Woodkin will will uh, decide they will find a place that they wish to call their home and they will root themselves into place there for the very tail end of their lives and um, often kind of um, function as guardians of that place and they are teachers and sages and very wise. Um, and this woodkin um, tying into the human thing, you know, he, people refer to him as Old Elmer. He's an Elma woodkin who is called Old Elmer and that is not his woodkin name. The story goes that that is a name that was given to him by a, uh, by a human when he was very young. Um, and supposedly it's funny because it's like like calling an elm woodkin elmer like it, okay well it's got the word elm in it you don't really understand why elmer is funny but apparently to that human it was funny um but everybody they they, they they took to the to the nickname and people have just called him that since um he comes thumping into the place and this was unexpected this is something that nobody here really kind of was prepared for and there's a mild panic um of people um, who are not used to seeing such a massive woodkin um, and like all the music stops and everybody looks and there's a handful of smaller folk like brownies um, and pixies who um, kind of panic and start to like you know like, like like struggle to get out of this gigantic tree person's way um, and uh, a little bit of chaos erupts as people um, start to like there's there's clearly actual fear in some people's eyes um, so uh take it from there um there's uh, th this is this is a like a, a true disruption of of what was otherwise a very nice festival day 
Um, and Elmer comes in, walks in, thump, thump, and people start to kind of, ah, and spread in panic. <laughs> Um, Junie immediately drops to the ground in front of the lantern and tries to make herself look big to like hide it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do this. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> nothing, to, nothing to see here. Well, I will obviously make an approach toward the elm whom I, uh, I refer to as grandfather. Whether or not we're genetically related not important. <coughs> He's one of the elders of Woodkin kind, and so he is grandfather. Uh, you walk over to him. He uh, kind of comes, uh, stops walking, um, leans down, um, and he creaks very, like, just <laughs> deep within the wood. There's this creaking, and this is another thing that comes with Woodkin as they age. Like, his, if, if he had bones, <laughs> his bones yep. creak. Um and it sounds like like uh, like you know like wood like a, if if you ever hear if you've ever heard like a house uh, settle or um, things shift because of uh, um, uh, of a great weight placed on a, on, on uh, something wooden and he leans down is everyone all right and he looks to see like there's some people who have actually kind of fallen and tripped over each other there's some injuries <laughs> <laughs> and he's it clearly a concerned bit of a yeah. He's he's lived Everything. he's lived a good forty years longer than anybody, than like the the next eldest Woodkin. Yeah, I heard Elvis Woodkin. Right, Elvis Woodkin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone all right? Everyone looks to be all right, Grandfather. Um, he kind of pats you. He does like this. It doesn't pat you. Just kind of touches you on the top of the. Head. Uh, top of your head and this, i get all this is, and happy. this is a thing that he does it's like it's a it's like one of his nice little grandfatherly affectations like oh um and he says uh could you tend to those and he points to um um a couple of brownies who are like nursing like they like it looks like they got kind of run over by somebody or maybe they twisted an ankle they fell they hurt they hurt themselves um and um one of the brownies is is, is younger um, and uh, is crying. Aww. Did they um, I, spill um... their ice cream or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will. I'll, I'll say to... that they like. There's. There's a. Um, there's a. Uh, a little. A little flagon. A little tankard that uh, one of them had that is tipped over and you can look you can see that like and you can smell the sickly sweet kind of like very there's mead and then there's like super sweet like this is what like kids love you know it's like candy mm -hmm. mead um that they have spilled and it's emptied out completely on the ground and they're it's all that Junie drinks <laughs> <laughs> the epitome of the sugar rush mm-hmm uh, I will go over and assist the brownies. I was just looking. I think I have something that resembles a healing. Um, yeah, if you have, there may be, a, you may have a talent that allows you to do something very specific like this, but there's also, um, you know, it, it could be as simple as making the right type of check. You could, uh, with the charm check, you could soothe um, and kind of calm them. With a the heart check, you could uh, help them to, you know, like, you're, yes, you're hurt, but, you know, um, heart. Okay, well, let's do this real quick. Um, to talk about the traits, the four traits that the characters have, so everybody understands. Um, yeah. Each character has four traits. There's body, which is everything physical about your character. Mind, which is everything um, intellectual and um, mental about your character, including their senses. Um, charm is everything social and charis uh, kind of charisma-based about their character. And then there's heart, which is your character's uh, sort of inner fortitude, strength, their, um, uh, their fearlessness, their uh, ability to inspire and help others. Um, so like in this case, you could be like a charm check would calm them. A heart check could potentially help them to be brave. Um, and help them to, sh you know, to kind of show, show by example that like, well, you're hurt, but this will pass. And like, you can be a tough soldier. You can be, you know, you can be a tough, uh, uh, you know, like you can, you can, you'll be okay. Like that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if you have, you might have a, a talent um, and for people viewing um, or listening afterwards uh, or, or even now, um, the characters also have what are called talents, which are like things that break the rules. There are uh, specific um 
abilities that they have. We've seen already Sparky um, uh, use a talent to inhabit his lantern. I'm assuming that's uh, <laughs> that's that yeah. that's that talent. Um, and uh, he also talked about ch- being able to change forms. You know, that's one of those things. Um, and every uh, every type different type of folk has. Um, a talent that is uh, kind of inherent to them, and it, it, it provides them with options for qu- like what are essentially subtypes. Um, when um, Al- Ali re- described Aquilaria as being a willow um, woodkin, that is to say, she is a deciduous type of tree rather than uh, coniferous. So, like deciduous versus coniferous are different. There's like little things that they little ways that the care uh, that the, the, that the folk differ for those types of things so just to give people a little bit of background so what are you up to Aquilaria? well and i believe i have a talent that removes the condition once a day uh okay which since i have no reason to think that i have any other danger facing me <laughs> uh i she this would be the kind of situation where she would use it to assist the the brownies uh especially if one had been injured um, yeah, and their grandfather can't help it. They're uh, they're they're not injured to the point of like being physically hurt, hurt, but they are okay. Or, they're, they're afraid, um, and so with with each Fair character, enough. characters have um, two condition tracks. There's a physical condition track and an emotional condition track, and the emotional track, um, lot, lot, kind of falls into like basically levels of fear. There's like you know you can be like a little bit sure. afraid, and then you can be outright terrified. Um, so you could you could remove that you could you use that talent to uh, allay there th- this brownie yes. fear. Yes, then we'll do that. Go um, over and try to be soothing, although not particularly charming. Soothe so. the, the the young the brownie. Um, tell me about the this this brownie. They're they're young. Can you tell me anything else about them? Let's. I'm sorry. Say that again. Tell me about this brownie that you go to talk to. Oh, uh, they're, they're the young. Brownie. Yes, they're little, and and actually little, little, like brownies are already small, but they're young, right. so they're even smaller. Um. Uh. To the point that she basically has, ends up getting down on hands and knees to speak to them uh, on at their level rather than looming over the top of them. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's quiet words and and brushing away of, of tears uh, uh, and and general. It's okay. It's just grandfather. He doesn't. He can't see you because you're so small, which is so important, and he loves you too. You know the the very calm, you know, uh, uh, make them feel better about themselves moment. Okay, you and you use your talent. You you remove that condition. I'm gonna have you make um, a charm check as well, so that we can uh, try, sure we can try to oh, check a charm here. check. Okay, yeah. well that's gonna be unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, now here, here's here's. And, and like you, you've 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 helped them. That's definitely going to happen. But like, does the question yeah. is, do your words do anything more? Do anything else? Got it. Um, so Got I'm going to have you do. Uh, given that you help them, um, we're going to call it target number four. But I'm going to give you advantage as well. Um, okay. The way the way trait checks at work is this: you have each of your traits is ranked one to four, um, with uh, higher is better. And when you make a check, you'll roll a number of d sixes equal to whatever that rating is and uh, okay. uh, versus a target number of four five or six. And you're looking to get one or more of your dice to hit that target number or exceed it. Okay. Um, and uh, it, there's also advantage and disadvantage. So if you do some, if you're in an advantageous position, you gain an additional die. If you are in a dis- disadvantageous position, you subtract a die all to a minimum of one. You never lose all your dice completely. You can always make the check. Um, so this is going to be a target number four charm check with advantage. Um, and I will always tell you what the target number is because it's in, how many um, dice succeed, how many get a hit. What we in the game they're referred to as hits. If you hit that target number or better, the number that the number of dice that get hits is important in the game. Um, so okay. uh, let's uh, let's do a. A charm check, target so number be, four. Because I haven't played in a really long time, I am rolling digital dice, which is why there's no sound. <laughs> uh, 
but two dice, I rolled a five and a two. Okay, so you got a five. That's one hit. Um, <clears throat> you, two things happen. Um, well, actually, let's, let's describe this real quick to bring everybody up to speed. When you make a check, if you get no hits, your character fails at whatever it is they were trying to do, and I can introduce some sort of complication. So there's something that will propel the story, make things a little more difficult, that'll you know introduce some sort of problem. Um, if you get, ex oh, and, sorry, um, and you mark one skill. On your character sheet, there we go. <laughs> On your character sheet, you have a, um, a skill track, a uh, spirit track, and a shadow track. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you'll mark one skill. If you, if you get no hits. If you get exactly one hit, you succeed at the thing that you were trying to do and you mark one spirit. If you get two or more hits, you succeed at the thing, you get a boon, so it does really well, you get like some extra added effect, um, but you mark one shadow. And the way each of those tracks work is this. If you fill your skill track up completely, you advance your character in some way. So you, you uh, you, you, you fill the skill track up by failing checks, so you advance your character by failing. By failing, they learn more. Um, if you succeed with just the one hit, you mark spirit. Spirit is a currency that you can spend to do a number of things. There are some, some talents require you to spend spirit to use them. Um, you can also spend a spirit to gain an additional die on a check. Um, and then if you get that, if you get two or more checks, or two or more hits, you f mark shadow, um, and you get the boon, but um, you, uh, you you mark shadow. Uh, basically, shadow is the void's influence over you because because you did something so incredibly well, you've proven yourself to be very very capable. That you are a potential hero in the making, and the void wants to try to corrupt you. So it starts to plant seeds of corruption within you called shadow. Um, and if you fill up your shadow track, you will gain a corruption on your character sheet. And every everybody's character sheet has three corruptions that they might end up with, um, and they're all unique to to that particular folk. So does that all make sense? Any questions? Yes. And we'll reiterate it as we need to. Um, but you made, you got one, exactly one hit. So you, um, in addition, to, uh, mark, mark one spirit. Yeah. Um, and then in addition, you, um, like they, uh, the, the, the little pixie introduces herself. I'm Vixa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And she jumps up. Um, and she still kind of favors the, the, you know, the, the, the better leg. She's still like, there's clearly like, oh, it's still a little hurt, you know, a little kid, but yeah. she, she, she reaches up and she, she like looks and kind of figures out like how to hug you <laughs> with you <laughs> down on all fours, like, and, and then kind of settles on like grabbing one arm. <laughs> um, Fair enough. <laughs> um, and says, and while she's in there close with you and, and, and she, she says kind of quietly, I like climbing trees, but I shouldn't climb him, right? It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> okay. Somewhere off in the in the distance, Junie just whispers, "Do it." <laughs> <laughs> He'd be really fun to climb. Yeah. Yeah, probably not today, though. If he sleeps, does he sleep? Does he sleep lying Eventually, down? Yes. Does, he, does he sleep no. standing up like a tree? Yes. Can I climb him then? Sure. Um, and she hugs you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she kind of, she, she draws back from you and looks to her parents and says, I'm okay. I'm fine. This... <laughs> Everything's fine. She looks back to you. What's your name? Aguilaria. She looks back around. She says, Aguilar... Ag this nice woodkin <laughs> made me feel better. Yay. Um, and and uh, uh, activity at the um, festival starts to kind of pick up again. Now the, 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 the chaos of uh, yeah, now the Elmer's arrival um, kind of, uh, kind of uh, abates. And um, people go back to, and there's some music again, and people are... Um, and at this point, now a little like all of this kind of takes place, and we're going to switch back to uh, the other characters, including Sparky. What's Sparky doing right now? How's he feeling? I'm hiding in my lantern <laughs> until there's a reason for me to come out again. 
So there's just an, an orange reddish light going in all directions. Okay. Um, well, let's do this. Um, <coughs> there's a rumble from deep, deep below the ground. You feel the ground shake. Um, all of the folk around you look around nervously to each other and there's this deep rumble and it grows and it swells and it's to the point now where it wasn't just a rumble it's a shaking you can see the leaves um, on trees shaking uh, you can see ripples in the pool where the waterfall um, even beyond where the water falls you know at the edges of the pool the water is starting to tremble um, uh, uh, Aquilaria you feel this deep within yourself um, as the mm -hmm. earth is moving back and forth very quickly and without warning, suddenly um, at the top of that, that rock where the water uh, 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 careens out and down into this waterfall that like 30 feet up this water, um, the clear, lovely water that comes down and cascades over this rock into the pool below turns gray. Um, and it seems like it's not only gray but like it's thicker than water it's not thin um it's it's more viscous and it starts to water fall down and into the pool um and uh a number of the the folk uh at the festival see this all happen at once and um there's immediately just a hubbub and and cries of oh my god what's happening what's happening um and a couple of people kind of start to creep toward the water a little bit um to get a better look as the water starts to actually hit the pool where this uh when i say water this gray um kind of brackish th uh, viscous water hits the, the the clear water of the pool um what do you do Uh, Junie's immediately going to turn around and like how compared compared to Junie how big is this lantern that Sparky is hiding in I think the lantern would be about this big okay handheld okay handheld for a for a uh, for a for an imp kind of yeah. big big for a pixie but not like not bigger, okay. not bigger than a pixie okay yeah. So she's going to turn and she's going to like grab it and like shake it a little and be like, did you do this? Hey, come on. Hey, you have to be nice. You have to be calling. Hey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And partially is taking her front paws and kind of just like lightly tapping the lantern. It's like, look, look, I, I can light up too. And uh, you see Parsley just start to glow a little bit um, with her river's light. And she's just like, come on, come on, let's, let's get going. She, she, she's well aware of what's going on behind her. And she's just like, let's, let's get going. Come on, no time for hiding. Come on. Sparky will reform at that point. Which means that the, the shape will come out of the the lantern and it will lift off the ground as it's again tied to his neck and the chain. Ah. Oh. Okay. People don't hate me. Okay, good. That's really cool how you can glow. <laughs> yeah. Um. So did you do that? Yeah. No. 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 It's really uh, bad, though, and we should probably not be here or, or do something about it. It's not good. It's bad. It's Judy, really bad. Judy is going to turn around and start waving her little pixie arms in the air and say, uh, Hey, Grandfather! Grandfather, over here! Oh, God, don't get the attention of the big guy. I'll go hide behind something. Uh, and Judy's going to, like, reach out a hand and, like, Grab him by the nape of the neck. The grandfather? No, Sparky. Oh, oh me. I mean, <laughs> ah, oh, no. Why? I didn't do anything, I swear. Okay, well, one plus one is two, and you're new here, and this has never happened before. So, seven, okay? 
Uh, look, an obvious distraction. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> should be fine. It should be fine. Grandfather will know everything. If you didn't do anything wrong, why would you be wanting to run away? Yeah, only guilty people run away. Run away. Trust me, I do it all the time. Yep. You're guilty. Why? What did you do? Did you do this? Not, not today. Huh. Okay. This is this is beyond my scope. All right, we should really do something about that, that though, because that's real bad. First thing you should do is confess to grandfather. Uh. All right, bless me, Grandpa, for I have sinned. It has been, uh, I don't know, like a day since my last confession. What are you I doing? I burned down her, her plants, though, and that was real bad. I feel bad about it. Promise not to do it again. Parsley, who is he talking to? The grandfather. That's his name, right? Did I get it wrong? Ah, I'm so bad at this. Oh, he can't <laughs> hear you from where we are. Yeah, oh, you I want me to shout? Him. Oh, that seems rude. I don't want to... Oh, well, go you know. up to him. Okay, but I just heard that one say that we shouldn't be climbing him, because... Uh... Oh, find a different way! This is yeah. your fault! Do something! <laughs> oh, God. Everything is always my fault. All right. So All right. Far. While I'm very carefully and slowly approaching the pond. <laughs> okay. Um, a couple of other... Um, uh, 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 folk are too, including right kind of right near you. There's a red cap, um, who is uh, who does not wear a red cap. In fact, um, she has a uh, like a red scarf um, that's wrapped around her neck, and you can see when you're looking kind of closely at it, like she has a um. She has clearly dipped her uh, uh, her scarf in blood relatively recently, like it's fresh blood. Um, it, you know, you don't see anybody injured around here, um, but uh, yeah, there's like it's and, and and she's kind of creeping forward ever so slowly, um, and reaches down and kind of touches the water. Like there, she's right over near where the you know the water's kind of hit the, the gray water is hitting the pool and kind of touches it and holds her finger up and it's kind of. It's not. It's not only is it viscous. It's kind of sticky. Um, yeah, we got a troll here. How do I? How do I smite this? <laughs> you click their name, and then you say ban. And ban. Ooh. That's easy. Dude, come on! It's a role-playing game. Don't be a dork. It's a bot <laughs> block. Yeah. Oh, it's a bot. Yeah, block. A bot. Block yep, ban. Block that's ban. Totally ban is the word. Block. Bye bye. That was fun. Okay, so back to the action. The joys of Twitch. <laughs> that's that's my first time. I've I've done a bunch of Twitch stuff, and that's the first time that's happened. Wee! First time for everything. It should be ban. <laughs> it should not be block. Block is that they can't talk to you. Ban is that they can't be in the channel. Oh, it's a okay. It's a circle with a slash through. I got there it. There we go. There we go. Thank you. There it is. Success. Hooray! Hello. Okay, Hello. thank you for joining us. Vanquished. Thank you for joining yeah. us on our adventure today. Um, that'll be the end of the <laughs> drop. Learning how to, to drop the ban hammer. Uh, <laughs> good and then Craig accidentally bans himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think you can ban the owner. Yeah. <laughs> so I've tried to time out the streamer at some point, but it doesn't work. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, they they they're kind of like they've got a little bit of the goo, and they're kind of like like it's it's kind of it's also like mildly sticky, <laughs> like they're yeah. touching. Um, I imagine it also smells terrible. Um, yeah, as you get closer, it uh, it does smell bad. What does it smell like? But you know, given that it smells bad, I'm gonna go with rot and sewer smells. Oh, wonderful! So it is like it does have like the gray water smell. Um, yeah. Actual gray yeah. water. Oh, that sounds that's terrible. <laughs> um, and it's 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 pouring into the pool uh, into the pool, and it's starting to, it's starting to overtake the pool. Like it's they're still on the edge on the on the far end of the pool. There's more. Um, there's more. Uh, 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 
uh, clear water that's you know un, untouched by it um, and so they're on that end of the pool there are people who are like they're they're finding whatever they can for for tankards and, and bowls and water skins and things they're trying to get some clean water really quickly Sweeping out of the, the pool um, and before the before the, the 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 dark water gets there um, and that uh, that NPC uh, that uh, that that red cap goes And just touches it to their tongue, <laughs> um, um, which is not surprising for red caps. They are an adventurous no, sort. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, they uh, uh, just the tiniest little tick, um, and they go. <laughs> and they look to you. <laughs> she looks to you and has this wide-eyed look of fear and panic. Um, and she doesn't transform into a chicken immediately. <laughs> but she starts <laughs> acting chicken-like because just a little. Um, and so, like, like she doesn't have wings, but, like, she kind of pulls her arms in, you know, kind of tight like this and starts to and, – and can't seem to speak and, and comes, like, running over to you with this panicked squawking. <laughs> Um, Aquilaria, you have a red cap that's doing a very good chicken impression right in chicken front of impression. you. Chicken impression. I have magic knowledge, but that's, I mean, sure. that's about all I got. We can do that. I um, used my one thing already. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, every, every character has a number of special, has a couple of specialties. You have like type there's not really skills in the game but there are because there's just the four trait checks that you make but there are areas that you can be kind of specialized in things that you're particularly good at and each each of the characters has two um you had a you had four to choose from and you picked two and uh, uh aquilaria one of yours is magic knowledge so if this is a magic kind of thing that's happening you could kind of try to figure out what that is that would be a mind check um, and we'll call it a target number five, but because you have magic knowledge, it's with advantage. Okay. So then I would roll my mind plus one. Yes. Okay. If anybody else would like to investigate um, any, of, any of what's going on or talk to any of the people who are now starting to clearly panic, we can absolutely get some other checks and involvement in here because we're, go we're, we're officially the at the point where things are starting to kind of ramp up something's going on <laughs> yeah i'm being pushed to go talk to grandpa since mm -hmm. he's incredibly high up in the air i'm gonna be like all right all right i can do this and i'll i'll take a glance at juni and i mean like, all right just like that all right here we go and i'll turn into a pixie but it's <laughs> it's it's like a fire pixie it glows there's you know some flames instead of hair it's still sort of impy <laughs> I'm Junie is gonna lean into his face real close, like. Oh. All right, did I get it right? All right, and, I think I got mean, it right. Like, um, you, you gotta work on the wings a little because they don't so much flap as like flutter. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I think they work though. I'm still in the air. Yeah. All right, here we go. Zoom, and I'll fly up to the grandpa. Okay, uh, real, um, real quick, um, Aquilaria, uh, Ali, can we get? Uh, I uh, I look panicked and confused. Two threes, a two, and a one. You rolled oh. poorly. So that's uh, uh, yeah. That's that's not going to tell you much about what's going on. It's going to nope. uh, you're going to mark one skill. Mark um, one skill. Thank you. And uh, yeah, keep it. That's one thing to keep in mind. Anytime you make a trick check, you will always mark one of those tracks. It's it's the game is built. There's always yeah. something that you mark. Um, and uh, you. Uh, you find yourself a uh, uh, complication. Let's see. You, you have no idea what you're dealing with. You've been kind of ignoring the red cap chicken person. Um, and they start getting, like, violent with you. Like, they're, like, <laughs> freaking out. I'm being pecked. And because red caps can fall to, uh, yeah, they're, they're basically pecking you with their face. Um, <laughs> uh, and in the process, it's spattering a little bit of the blood from their scarf. Um, oh, on yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, you're fending off a, uh, a panicked, uh, <laughs> red cap chicken. Um, 
Junie still has her like ribbon dancer, like ribbon attached to a stick. Could she fly over and try to like rodeo the red cap? <laughs> sure. Um, oh, I like getting rich. Uh, are you trying to put on like uh, we, we, like a like a performance that kind of catches their attention and like lead them away? Or no, she's trying to like lasso. Oh, like literally lasso them. Okay, that's... like literally <laughs> lasso the red cap. Gonna get over there and whoop, 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 and kind of get it tangled <laughs> around them. Yeah, um, yeah, yep. sure. Um, well, given that you're pixie sized, um, mm -hmm. it'll you'll, you're basically kind of going for a limb or maybe the neck. Um, yeah, <laughs> that'll be. We'll call that a a, a, a body check. Okay. Uh, to uh, do that. And I'm going to give you advantage because uh, yes. they are not paying attention to you at all. They are instead pecking at the woodkin. Okay. Um, so my body is two and you gave me advantage. So I'm going to roll three. Target number four. Uh, ooh, that is two successes. Two successes. You um, go ahead and mark shadow. Um, -hoo -hoo -hoo. And you... you like a chill runs down your spine just ever so slightly um and uh you you wrap them up pretty nicely with uh your ribbon and with the boon you can basically kind of do what you want with them you could you could plant them in the ground s drag them away set them you know sent sent get 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 them out of there um um junie will like dot like with the bit of the ribbon and the stick she's got left um, she'll like dive bomb in the ground to drive <laughs> the handle into the ground like a stake to like keep it corralled. Okay, so now you've leashed. Stay. We have leashed the chicken red cap to the ground next, next to the corrupted pool. Yes. Well done. Um, and uh, what's Parsley up to? Huna? Parsley is, is very split between the situation of seeing uh, an imp turning into a pixie and then flying off, and then the other pixie running over to a red cap chicken and pinning it down, and it's like, uh, hmm, I'm gonna go see what's up with that, and goes running towards the, the red cap uh, chicken <laughs> and it's just like this is this, this looks kind of new this looks different this is she's uh she's gonna try and use her uh her rabbit brain see if maybe there are stories or maybe some passed down knowledge that she might have heard of sure do you have any do you have any specialties that might help uh history there i, I think uh, right. unless fighting works for this <laughs> uh... no um but history history would make sense for this because um yeah the uh for for those uh watching um not only is parsley a pair uh, a rabbit she is a paragon rabbit which is to say she is kind of an exemplar of her species she is she is the best rabbit she is a rabbit um that is, serves sort of as a guardian and emissary for rabbit all of rabbit kind um, and has lived for a very, 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 very long time. So she has a knowledge of history. She might know something like this that has happened before. So sure, mind check, uh, target number five with advantage for your specialty. Okay. Four. Uh, okay, I rolled a, a two fours, one five, and a six. Okay, two successes, uh, mark yes. a shadow. Um, yes, you have heard of things like this happening before. I mean, this this screams the void. Like a sudden, out-of-nowhere corruption of something as pure and natural as water, as in this case, um, uh, you know, freshwater drinking water, water that is that is used by communities, water that will would, would be otherwise serving this festival, this wonderful place. Like this, this reeks of the void. Um, and it has been a long time since you have dealt with the void. You have, de you have in your past lives dealt with the void on a number of occasions. Um, some of them are sort of lost to, uh, to, to time because you do forget things. Um, and then sometimes those memories become rekindled 
Um, but uh, you vaguely recall things like this happening in the past. With, um, with a boon, we're, let's say that um, you know how to alleviate um, the effects of the, um, of the water, of the, of the gray water on people who have uh, you know, tasted, it or, tasted it or ingested it. You know how we can cure this, um, this red cap. Um, but it's difficult, um, and it's, it, it, it would be, you know, like, you couldn't just easily cure a lot of people. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about what that might be, but you know that from your past. Uh, Sparky fly, uh, well, not flies, but, uh, oh, yeah, it flies. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, over to... <laughs> over I'm going to fly up through all the branches, through all the leaves, until I get to their face. Um, and there's old Elmer, um, or Grandpa, both, neither of which are his name, um, but the names that you know <laughs> oh him by. Oh my god, I actually did it. And I'll, I'll like make for a branch and then turn back into my normal shape, where I will just glomp onto. Uh, hi there. Hello. Sorry to just drop in on you like this. No, no worry. What, uh... All right, you see that thing over there with the gray? That's real bad. You you you're in charge here, right? You might you might want to you know deal with that or something. No. Like stick a rock in it or something. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. I am not in charge. My days of leading are over. All right, but like it, that's a big hole. You can lift a big rock. Uh, ooh, bum. You know, maybe. Mm. Come on, do it for your old pal Sparky, who you just met. I could try something, but this does not seem within my ability. I can try, though. To pick up a rock? That is a climb that these old, old bark cannot make. Could you help me climb? The, the I mean, rock I can where, the, where the water is coming, <laughs> where the water is coming out, <laughs> encouragement. Where the water is coming out is like is a good thirty feet up, and he's not that tall, not by a long shot. Um, he looks, uh, kind of leans in close to you. I will do what I can. You're the only one that's big enough to pick up a rock, big enough to put in a hole. So it, I think it's got to be you there, Bucko. I will try. And you gotta trust me that that stuff's real bad. Okay, let's let's give uh, let's give him some encouragement. Um, that feels an awful lot like a heart check. Let's do it. <laughs> I might not be smart, but I got a lot of heart. Target you target, target number uh, target number six. Sorry, this is this is getting him on your side is tough. He's very old and very set in his ways. Well, I got one. I got oh, a six, did? a five, and a three. All right. He's going to try. Um, he looks to you and says, I'll, I'll do what I can. He looks around. He finds a, a rock, not terribly large. Um, and he throws it up above, up high up. Oh, that seems the, bad. The rock oh, rock. that seems bad. <laughs> and it goes up and it hits and it kind of bounces. And it hits right kind of where, like about where the water kind of comes out. Um, and as the rock gets there, the, 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 the force of the water that's coming out like sprays pushes the rock away like it knows the rock is there like the rock the 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 water itself is stopping it's uh the rock from from impeding it um and uh this causes some of the water to kind of spray around nobody gets it in their mouth or eyes or anything like that we don't suddenly have a bunch of chickens um but it it you know it it kind of sprays the water out a little bit and then then the water starts to trickle back at its normal speed um and uh, he looks to you and says, I do not know that this can be stopped so easily. All right, maybe you're right. Okay, new plan, everybody leave. No one drinks from the water, no one touches the water. This place is a no-go area. We'll put up signs, you know, like big flashy tape. But I, I think the water can be cleansed. It's been a long time, but I've seen such things happen. But how? 
You need to find a unicorn. The unicorn. It's like a horse, right? <laughs> it's a horse with a sword on its head. Um, it's. <laughs> uh, it is. It is a rare creature. It looks like a horse, but it is not. Um, it carries uh, upon its head uh, magic, uh, pure goodness and purity. Oh, so it's like what I got, but different. <laughs> yes. The tricky part, though, is that the unicorn must cry its tears into the foul water. Ha! Huh. Get the unicorn, get it back here, make it tell it a sad story, and then everything will be hunky dory. All right. Well, if, that sounds good. If you can find one. I have not seen a unicorn in many, many decades. All right. Well, we're pretty high up now. Let's just uh, let's look around. <laughs> you start right, looking you, around. You look this you way, I look that way. And a herd, a herd of unicorns wanders into this clear <laughs> <No. laughs> Um And he, he leans in um, to you, uh, Sparky, and he says, and this, um, he says kind of quietly, just loud enough for you to hear. Do you have a tale of loss? Everyone loses. I do have a tale. Look. Oh, no, no, I... a, no, a story, a story. Oh, yeah, I got those too. Of loss. You know, life gets rough sometimes. And uh, especially with that stuff going around, you know, I don't want to move again. So maybe maybe this time we can just, you know, stop it before the whole planet turns into a big rock. That'd be nice. That'd be real nice. There's a lot of cool people and shows and foods. And I don't want to move again. All right. Search your memory for the greatest story of loss you have. Keep that for the unicorn, but you must find one first. All right. Are you to go alone? I mean, the bunny might be handy. <laughs> she seems really nice and, you know, smart and kind. Gather your friends. All right. Okay. Uh, and um, I'm going to come back real quick to uh, to Huna as far as the cure for the chicken <laughs> the chicken cure, um, chicken do, cure. Do you have a thought on that she uh, she she really thinks hard with with everything going on it's, it's especially with the commotion like how, how can a how can a rabbit think straight she's like uh, there's, there's this thing. I don't know who's listening to me, but whoever's <laughs> listening to me, there's this thing, like, uh, I, I don't want to say it's an elixir, but some sort of, like, rare, like, ointment, and then, yeah, you just rub it on them, and it should be fine, but I can't, oops, sorry, I can't seem to remember it well, uh, Maybe some sort of plants, magical plants. Uh, uh. What if can, can um can we just make it throw up? I can go grab some of those berries. <laughs> sure. Um, you can gra yeah yes. you can, you can grab some of the berries that like make you hallucinate and vomit rain rainbows. vomit Great rainbows rain as rain I recall. Um, Sparky, Sparky, let us know when you vomit a rainbow, or if you do, maybe maybe imps don't. <laughs> maybe the berries affect imps differently. We don't know. Junie does not have experience. <laughs> this is this mm -mm. is new. Mm -mm. Um, so yeah, you can grab some of those berries and try to get the red cap um, to to eat them, and, th and it's easy enough to deal with that because you've got the that poor red cap all tied up in, yeah. <laughs> in ribbons. Junie's totally going to have, like, you know, she'll gather the berries in her tunic, and she's taking one at a time and, like, okay, catch! <laughs> come on, come on. And, Get it. and the red cap is just, burr, burr, and, like, totally not playing the game with you. <laughs> uh, Parsley, you might have to hold him down. Uh... 
Uh, all, all right. Uh, how much taller is this red cap? <laughs> well, if if you're a regular size bunny rabbit, this red cap is a good five or six feet or five or six times taller than you are. They're like they're they're, they're three feet, two and a half, three feet tall. She's just like uh... with her little paws. <laughs> uh, she's uh, jumping she's... on his back. Like. Uh, okay, how do I, how do I do this? Um, uh, 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 I'll just do this! And she, she, she tries to do a jump headbutt (laughs) to the stomach. (laughs) Okay, you jump and headbutt the stomach, uh, into the red cap's stomach, which causes the, uh, the red cap to, ah! And open his mouth and boom, 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 in go the berries. Um, yep. And uh, however long later it it, it is according to uh, 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 <laughs> Liz, Liz I, I'm not sure how long how long does it normally take Liz for the for the, uh, um, the rainbow. It's, a, it's like it's it's a qu- it's a quick trip. It's like five minutes. Okay, so a few minutes later. Um, <laughs> okay, a few minutes later, <laughs> the red cap woman with the red scarf, not cap, who's acting like a chicken. Vomits rainbows. rainbows. <laughs> I love this world. Um, <laughs> and um, so just like literally like light of different colors pours out of their mouth. Um, it, it, it empties like clearly like they, yeah, it does empty some of what was in their stomach in the process. So interspersed amongst the, the beams of light are like little chunks of things. Um, but they continue to act like a chicken and they do not appear to be cured oh. even though they have uh, potentially it looks like you know you've potentially purged um the water itself from their system but whatever effect is there is is affecting them and as the group of you um considers what to do about this poor chicken red cap Let's um, do it again. <laughs> um i think uh we're like at about the halfway point we'll take like five minutes if people want to grab something to uh, take a bio break grab something to drink um uh, listeners uh, hang in there we'll be back in just a few i'm going to switch to the little screen now can i do this properly hold on
Ah, everyone refreshed? <laughs> yes, everyone uh, ready to go for our continuing story? Round um, two. <laughs> round Fight. two. Um, as uh, we, we have um, some information from uh, old Elmer, or grandfather, um, and uh, uh, we have we have a, a, a red cap who is currently still chickified um, <laughs> that we are having no luck with thus far. Um, so I'll I'll put it back into all of your hands. Um, the, the 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 crowd. Um, some people still are kind of hanging around. Some people have gathered water, like I said. But at this point, like the the um, the, the the corrupted water is starting to fill the pool quite a bit. And um, some people are just like outright leaving. Like there's just panic. There's worry. Um, people know the stories of the void. They know when terrible things happen. Um, they they may have to hunker down. They may have to find um, help. They may have to find safe places. Um, so that's all beginning to happen here. But uh, the four of you are kind of in the middle of everything. So take it away. Hey, so those berries didn't work, but I have an I have a, an assortment of other uh, um, greeneries we can use. We can use parsley, we can use uh, cilantro, we can use chive, maybe mint. Um, uh, oh, it's a plant. It's a plant. Do you need help me? It's a plant. It's supposed um, to be a magical plant. Um, the this is the only magical plant I really know. Um, sh should we just like put everything in a bowl together and stir it up? Sure, we'll give the we'll give this chicken the garnish special. She yeah, putting like a little bit of parsley, chive, just anything she can find, just like one little pile. It's like yeah, this, this is gonna work. Junie's just gonna like pop, like zip off, and start gathering berries from different plants that she probably knows nothing about. Uh, Mean meanwhile, Sparky is uh, jumped off the grandpa and is just f falling to, to the ground and he's going to panic, forgetting to, that he can turn into a pixie because he he's only done that once. And he'll fall very close to uh, Aquila. And at the last moment, as he's scared he's going to hit the ground, he'll go into the lantern and... The hope is that she'll catch the lantern. Which she will. <laughs> Given that she can. <laughs> All right, I'll reform, and you'll probably be holding me in a somewhat awkward position, because you'll either be holding the chain, which is attached to my neck, or you'll be <laughs> holding the lantern, and thus I'll be, you know, hanging on that. Uh, yeah, thanks for catching me there, but... Um, this is not ideal. Could you, like, give me, uh, uh, uh oh, there we go. Put him down. <laughs> All right. So the big guy told me what to do. Uh, I'm going to need a bunch of help because I don't know where any unicorns are. You, do you know any unicorns? Unicorn? Yeah, yeah they're like hold horses. On. Hold up. Two, yeah. two things. Two things. How come he told you? Because I went up there. Did Like, do you want me to take you up there? Because I don't know. I, I don't know if I can do that, but maybe I'll tell you as well. But I told him to, to huck that rocket, the thing, but that didn't work out. So we came up with plan B and that, that, that we need to find a unicorn. And then we get to tell the unicorn a really sad story, like where everybody dies or like maybe someone has a mom and then they don't have a mom anymore or maybe their but mom's the really upset stories. at them. Why would, we, why, why would we want to tell a unicorn that? Oh, that was, that's that what he said. Because we got to make the unicorn more. cry. And then when the unicorn cries, we put the tears into the lake and that will somehow solve the problem, which is new to me. I don't know. Like, I've seen that stuff before, but I don't know if anything can get rid of it. I thought we could just, like, stick a rock, you know, make sure it doesn't go here. Mm. But that's real bad. No one drink the water. Or, like, swim in it. That That's probably even worse. Did, did any of you drink the water? Don't mm -hmm. drink the water. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, well. Huh. There's that guy, but... Did... Yeah, we don't, we don't know them. Mm -hmm. No, okay. never seen him before in my life. 
it. You said unicorn. There, that, that's impossible. There's no, there's no unicorn around uh -uh. here. Right. Not so we gotta go find one. Yeah. I looked from up there, but I didn't see anyone. I saw a donkey, but that's not the same thing. No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you don't make that comparison again, ever, especially in the presence of a unicorn. I mean, they're sort of similarly shaped. Yes, they're also sort of similarly as proud. Mm, that, yeah, that's 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 true. All right. <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll go up to the to, to the red cap and be like, "Hi, my name is Sparky. Uh, we haven't been introduced. I'm new." Junie is allowed is totally watching this happen and just going. <laughs> <laughs> then my hand. Waiting to see and the, back. the red cap kind He's of. He's super pecs. friendly. Oh boy, a foreign language <laughs> with like interesting <laughs> cultural aspects to the communication. I don't know. Like, what do I do? Do I peck back? Is that what they do? Um, yeah. All right, here we go. One, two. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Oh, why would you do that? Who would include that into their cultural demeanor? That seems very really practical. <laughs> it's it's a show of strength. Oh, now, now, now you're equals. Oh, well, I, I guess that's good. Do you, do you want to come with us to find the, the unicorn? Do you know where one is? Mm -mm. You know, I love I paying, I love playing NPCs that don't have to say anything. They don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know we're all new at being friends, but I think I think we should put this guy in charge. I know he's weird, but like some unorthodox plans, that, that might be just what we need. Could I request... <laughs> Could, could I could I request that at this moment just a little more of that berry juice hits the chicken stomach and it vomits rainbow one last time? Okay, sure. And it vomits rainbow <laughs> right on top of Sparky. Um, it's, oh boy! It's, the, it, the stomach had been cleared out, mm. um, but now you have Sparky. You have like, like all these multicolored lights that are just hitting you mm -hmm. right in the in the lantern. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, my land. Oh, no. Phew. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, you can't wash that out. off now. Yeah, it's oh, magic. Man. Um, Dang it. I don't have any water to clean it off with either. <laughs> Can I get a, uh, a mind check out of anybody who might know uh, where a unicorn might be found. Um, and this, you know, if you have a, if you have a specialty that might fit for that, like history or um, if they're, uh, I'm trying to think if there's, uh, well, unicorns are magical. So magic knowledge might apply. Um, I also have nature knowledge. So nature, either, one of those. either one of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with, uh, so a mind check at target number, uh, five, um, with, with, a you know, and if you have a specialty, take, a advantage for that. And, and not, two. anybody who wants to make the check can make the check. I just okay. like rolling dice. Uh, two, I six, hit six. one success. One success. Okay. Um, uh, everybody who got one success. Well, uh, if you got one success, mark uh, spirit. If you got uh, two, mark shadow. Um, anybody who uh, who got one success, basically, um, yeah, unicorns are incredibly rare. And um, the last you had heard of, of like the location of any unicorns was far, far, far far to the east of here um that there was a that there's a grove that um that a uh, like a an extended family of unicorns frequents um but that you also know that with uh with unicorns um there there's a sort of a rite of passage that takes place um with uh when a unicorn uh, kind of is ready to uh to to be considered completely grown um and take a mate and perhaps start a family and and kind of go out on their own and not be part of like not be identified so much as the child of their parents but now they are kind of standing on their own four feet uh four hooves um they uh they will travel out into the world further and they will experience more of the world and go like kind of on a sojourn that will take them around and so there's a possibility of a unicorn being closer than that grove far away are you saying that unicorns go on Rumspringa? Sure. <laughs> my man, my man as well. 
and they go out and they have all sorts of debaucherous non-unicorn <laughs> sex and they eat tons and tons of those berries and they yeah. just vomit they vomit rainbows everywhere that's that's a view that's 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 the, the rainbows rainbow vomiting unicorn um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they so they do that. Um, it's and how then, those tree. It's how those plants get fertilized. Right. Who had who had the double cheese? <laughs> Brings a whole who had, who new had, meaning to taste the rainbow. Oh, you're oh. fired! You're fired! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. Oh. Well, actually, not really, but it's fine. Um, and then who who was it that got two? Allie, you got two. I only got one. I did. I'm sorry. It was me. I got two. I got um, two. You also know of, uh, you haven't heard specifically of any other unicorns being nearby, but you know um, about a, um, a telescope that is situated um, on top of a uh, an old ruin uh, like an old there was a, a stone building that was built long ago it's it's fallen to disrepair no one lives there that you know of but there's this ancient and powerful magical telescope um, that uh, from the uh, from the telescope you can look all across reverie you can see everywhere across Reverie, um, not into the deep and dark and hidden places, but anything on top of the world, on top of the ground. Um, and if you use it correctly, you can seek out specific people and specific types of creatures. Um, this telescope sits uh, on the top of this uh, ruined tower um, that was part of this old ancient ruin that sits at the precipice right on the edge of a low, uh, low-sloped volcano. Ooh, volcano bay. So you might be able to find a unicorn from there. Except there's a volcano. <laughs> a volcano. <laughs> Before we decide to travel there, I would like to remind you that there is a volcano. Yes. <laughs> In case you were wondering, volcanoes get really, really hot. The last time this volcano was known to erupt was when um, old Elmer, when grandfather was very very young the last time the void impinged on this world that was the last time that volcano erupted it's referred to by your people as mount smoke um, it is a mountain it's kind of like like a low slope old you know weathered down very ancient volcano um, and it just there's just a, like a, a rivulet just a little s string of, uh, of, of smoke that is always pouring out of it but it's never um, in, in never in your lifetime or your parents' lifetime has it um, spewed any lava forth or magma. Okay. Because it's lava when it's down there. When it's up here, it's magma. Right? Yes, that's or is that backwards? That yeah. Or did I get that it's backwards? backwards? It's lava when it's underground. It's magma when it's up above. I don't know why scientists sure. decided they needed sure. to have a differentiation, but eh, what you going to do? Um... So yeah, you you know about that. Feel free to break it to the rest of the group. Um, um, I'm looking super uncomfortable about the whole thought process, and then point out, um, we there 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 may be an easier way to find the unicorn, but it involves a volcano. <laughs> Take some note. All right, I'm gonna pack up. And leave town? Come on, guys. No. We're not, no, no volcano. No. We should, everybody Parsley. should not be here anyway, because of that. But volcano. I don't yeah. like heat. Volcanoes are boring. There are rocks and there's fire. I, I know I know about that. I want to see plants and, you know, other people. Those are interesting. He I haven't seen those before. Parsley, yeah. don't you want to come on an adventure? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see here. We got a uh, we got a situation with our uh, with the pond, mm -hmm. and to fix it, we gotta go to this place. Go on an adventure. At a volcano. Mm -hmm. 
did you hear she the part is, about she, the she volcano? Ha- <laughs> she she's like every every couple words she's like slowly inching away from the group, just like <laughs> fire, hot rocks. And I'm so mimicking her and backing up in the opposite oh, direction. Is it that way? All right. I'll just follow Parsley. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps equal uh. distant. Um the uh the, the chicken tries to follow you. <laughs> um, sparky. I'm the chicken is not even. Yeah. All right. But it, go, it, it finds itself kind of stuck to the ribbon that was uh with the, the, the mm-hmm. handle was driven into the ground, so it's it's leashed currently. Um Junie is going to like grab one of Parsley's paws in both of her hands and be like, but par Parsley you always say how you, you know, you're always stuck at home taking care of everyone else and you just wish, you know, this is our chance to make a name for ourselves. To go on an adventure to save the forest. Oh, you get a new name? That's cool. Yeah, I do have that sudden, I have this urge within me to do something about it. But <laughs> what, why does it have to be a volcano? Oh. Come on, just just look at us. We got we we we, we got her to the the woodkin and just like I don't know if she's gonna like it. We got you. I don't know if you're gonna like it. We got him part the like points it. to Sparky. It's boring. He might not like it, but I think he'll get used to it. And you look at me. I'm. Have you heard of a rabbit at a volcano? I can. Um. Mm. You know. I've been I've been working on my magic and um I can look what, look at what I can do and Junie is going to like zip around in the air um because one of her specialties is using minor magic Woo-hoo. and like um a like misshapen rain cloud and like a gentle little rain falls on parsley not enough to put out a fire at all but like that weird, uncomfortable damp. <laughs> um, let's 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 roll this back for just a moment. Yep, 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 um, yep. What uh, what realm of magic are you utilizing? Um, water. Okay. Um, is that one of the ones you have? It didn't. Am I just miss? Am I forgetting something? I mean, it just gave. It didn't tell me to like choose specifics. Okay. It was you, just you have my talent. special. Okay, I guess I, there's perhaps a miscommunication here. I want to make sure we're okay. representing the game correctly. And that's okay, okay because you can still find a cool thing to do with this. Um, okay. The talents that you have, some of them say that, in parentheses, they say that they're magic. Okay. And then after the word magic, there's a word. Okay. And which words do you have? I have flesh and light. Okay, so, so you, can, those, you can do things those with... Those are the two magics. You can, do with, you can do things with light and you can do things with... Um, with flesh, like body, with okay. like, you can, you can okay. change forms. Okay. Of, of a okay. Body. The only re- so, the only reason I didn't use the word body there is because you have a trait called body, so I had to use yes. the word yeah flesh. Okay. Okay. A weird word to use, but I can't use body. <laughs> so instead, so Junie like concentrates for a little bit, and like you see like her her hair, which always sort of has this like little ethereal wave to it. Um, she sort of lights up from within a little bit and parsley her feet like callous a bit (laughs) so that you know like oh it's not so hard walking on hot ground (laughs) so you have some Uh, protection on your feet like little tap shoes (laughs) feeling just like the sudden shift from soft to hard she's uh she does the little dog dance when you put little shoes on them. Yes! Like, put shoes on them! <laughs> like, uh, it's so uh, funny to watch. Okay, okay. Uh, do you need to, so, what, what is this? It, it's so you don't burn your feet. I, I mean, I don't shoes. have that problem. Yeah. Sh- fine. Okay, as long as I have these uh, shoes. I mean, I don't know how long they're going to last, but I can always try to redo them. 
uh, for the purposes of of the rules and the story, typically something like that will last for the scene. So Excellent. like if you're in a position where you're having to get past fire or lava or hot floor or whatever, like something like you'll you'll be able to use make that check. Normally there's a check involved with it. You're just mm-hmm. kind of showing off here, so we're not going to mess mm-hmm. around with that. But um, yeah, you'd you'd have to. Uh, it, it would last for the scene, so it gets you through whatever the challenge is at that moment. Um, the game does not use a lot of weird, like, you know, this thing only lasts for three rounds or one minute or yep. uh, typically it's yeah. something, typically something, usually something is instantaneous or it lasts for the scene most of the time. Okay. So we've got a, a rabbit who's trying to figure out how to walk again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, clearly um, if you are, if you three are going, I'm going to have to go along just to make sure you don't kill yourselves. I mean, I would probably nice. kill him, but... Oh, why? Well, yes. oh. No, it would be an accident. Trust me. <laughs> um, all right, so are we Are we off? Is that the plan? We, Is everybody we, on um, board? We, 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 go, we go, look how we go. Well, well... I, I, I might want to impress on the townsfolk that they should not be here anymore, but they should take the town and put it over here. <laughs> I mean, it's here there... now near the bad stuff. It should be over here, away from the bad stuff. I I feel like there would be a preparation montage. Sure. You know, like so. Uh, Junie's montage. Yes. Let's let's do a montage. What does let's everybody do? A montage. do? Like um, uh, Junie definitely uh, grabs some of the hallucinogenic berries because you never know. <laughs> Um, and a vial of the chicken water. <laughs> um, and like, you know, probably tells some other pixie from her clan where she's off to. Oh, you know, um, we've been given a very important, important mission by grandfather to, you know, like save the world. So if you could <laughs> do my chores for me, I would really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. And all, all of your family members are just looking with their mouth mouths hanging open, yeah. and like, and they start immediately arguing about who's got to do what chore. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> as, Junie, as you always, just leave. Junie, Junie always has the worst chores because she's always getting in trouble. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. What else is everybody doing? Uh, Aguilary will probably have a scene where she's speaking to the elders of the of the um, the Woodkin kind and. And saying goodbye to mother and father, and you know she's very family connected. So it's the it's the I'm going on a quest. I must say goodbye to all. You have strong roots, is what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes indeed. <laughs> but um, bum. Yep, pH approved. Actually, I believe I listed it as family tree. Oh, oh <laughs> good night. That's my alley. I've missed you. <laughs> I know. I tried. <laughs> It is good to play with you, though. It's been a really long time since we did this. Uh, we've got two more people. What are, what of what 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 important bit of anything is happening before you take off? Uh, I think would partially she she will also tell her family as well, uh, and I feel as if instead of a, a you know just a goodbye, try to figure out where everything um, is going to go from there. I, I feel like there's a somewhat serious talk. Um, about her role being a paragon, them giving some insight, but they themselves don't know a whole lot, and all she's just going to do is just reluctantly just pack things up, and as much as she doesn't want to leave, she she at least wants to make sure Junie doesn't do anything <laughs> too stupid. The, the other rabbits there um, take in everything that you're saying to them, and they, at the same time, there's a there's a certain sorrow in their eyes because they know the role that you play for for rabbit kind, and they know that you may die doing this. These are the sorts of things that paragons are born to do. Um, when it becomes important for someone to step forward, and they know that the, that there's they while you may very well reincarnate and become another rabbit down the road, there's always like this version of parsley 
is lost. So there's a little bit of a sorrow associated with it. You know, those of you who know um, Star Trek, they're, they're like you are a, a, a trill, but there's 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 a part of you that carries forward. That's the Kurz, you know, that's the Dax, <laughs> but Jadzia and Kurzan and all of them are all a little different, and they all have like you may not have this quite the same relationship with some people if if you know at, at, if if you were to die and, and become reincarnated as another version of Parsley. Um, so there's always there's there's like this little bit of sorrow that's in their eyes as you leave. Well, bye. <laughs> I guess. And they all wave their unique. they wave their little paws. Their 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 ears kind of fold back, kind of sullenly. I'm thinking Peter Rabbit now. <laughs> Sparky? No, that's a- I will have a few things. One is a short scene where I'm struggling to push like a stone golem kind of creature, but I'm, I'm not making any headway, so I'm just like pushing a wall and struggling <laughs> and doing nothing. One is where I'm explaining the whole town here over there to like a bunch <laughs> of people who don't understand at all. One is where I'm making a sign that says don't drink the water and I'm <laughs> burning the letters into it and it, it I, I do a good job and I'm looking satisfied at the end result and then there's this little spark at the end which then catches <laughs> the entire thing and, I, uh, and then I, I use paint <laughs> uh, you berry dye yes <laughs> you, you dye it with berry juice there you go <laughs> how do you think we make paint around here <laughs> Just vomit. that's how we make paint it's the colors yes <laughs> pigment <laughs> yeah, that works. Go that's, that's great. I'll use the vomit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, multicolored, multi-lettered. Um, Hating with all the colors of the wind, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> all the colors of the rainbow. All the colors of the morning sun. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and you're off, I suppose. Um, as you travel, um, you see other um, examples of the void coming to bear. You see bad things happening, corruptions happening, dark things happening. Um, what what do you all, uh, let's just go around uh, for, for a few, from a few of you. What do you see? What, uh, what else um, starts to rear its head? Now this is, a, this, this basically we're going into sort of a travel montage. This like takes you a, a few days to get where you're going, but it's the, it's early in the stages of the void um, arriving at Reverie. So it's, it's mostly you're just starting to see where like everything's starting to, starting to crumble a little. Um, I think, oh, um, I think as we make our way through the woods, um, it's definitely quieter than it should be. Um, you know, the, the sort of usual um, forest sounds are not as present. And I think maybe at one point, um, a deer like darts across the path and we notice that its eyes are like bloodshot and it's like foaming a little um and that the the water is having an effect on the creatures in the forest i uh, I, 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 I would also say that possibly we run across a place where it appears that water has abandoned the area and it's just dry and dead uh, you come across a, uh, you, you go to cross what you know to be a stream, and there is no stream. It's just an empty bed um, with just a few little pockets, little few little spots of water. And it, it is water water. It's not the corrupted water, um, but it's, there's not much water. This is like, this is the, 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 the problem with the water is deeper than just that one waterfall and pool, clearly. Um so yeah, uh, empty stream bed where a, you know a day ago there was water trickling through there. As we're making the transition from a forested area to the volcano, uh, some of the trees are petrified. Just they're they're a rock now. 
Okay, their rock. What's unique about the rock? What's unique about the look? Um, anything anything remarkable other than like you know, is there is there a coloration or a pattern? Maybe just a vibe more than a, an actual look. Like you can feel that that shouldn't be happening. Okay, so it, it, it even it, it, an emotional. Um, as you walk past these trees um, that are just just sporadic, just tree a tree here, a tree there, um, that has petrified overnight um and then when you get kind of close to it there's like this sinking feeling in the depth of your soul this kind of darkness that just starts to creep into your head and those of you who have recently um gained shadow you hear in the back of your mind um just a whisper a voice you can't quite make out what it's saying but there's there's like you you're hearing something. It's like when it, it's that feeling when you wake up and somebody's speaking to you as you're waking up, but you're not quite sure what they're saying yet because you haven't quite pulled out of your slumber. Um, and but there's there's definitely a voice there. But you and you can't tell what they're saying, but you know that it's not good. That they are whatever that voice is saying. It's it's a fell thing. It's dark. It's it's mystery. It's shrouded in corruption. And it, it it gets louder every time you get close to one of these trees. Oh boy, I said it's going pretty quick. We might want to hurry up. I can imagine Parsley being very um, uneasy uh, about the trees and the environment. Um, and that she would also feel uneasy uh, if, there are, if there are um, animals who have not drank the water who haven't been uh like who haven't fell into the darkness and that um like from herbivores to carnivores uh any sort of like if not water food uh the thought that the the thought that like anything that they try to gain uh just to survive is like tarnished and uh, a simple um, patch of chive like would be green and luscious but uh, corrupted would seem almost dark almost almost as if they are wilting but not and uh, I imagine that n creatures don't want to go anywhere near anything that looks um, appealing but really isn't you get the distinct impression that even if these things that are kind of growing dark and spoiled aren't necessarily poisonous or aren't necessarily um, evil or, or darkly magical, that there's in the, in, in the depths of your, in your gut, you feel like someday they're going to be. It's just a matter of time before we get to that point. And as you kind of get out of the... Um, the more uh, forested areas and you get kind of into the open kind of hillier areas, um, you notice also that the the color sort of starts to sap out of everything. Everything is ashen. Everything is pale. Um, any of you who, um, fe if you feature any bright colors, if you if your skin or your hair or your wings or your clothing or anything is, is bright colors, um, that's still there. It's still noticeable. Um, but the world around you starts to to become pale, and so it's it. I mean, it starts to look like like if this were a cartoon, it's like the back. You are drawn in one style, and everything else in the world is drawn in another style, um, which makes you stand out, and you you become painfully aware of this about a day into this, where like. Um, Junie, you find yourself. Like, I, I imagine Junie's got some colorful. Mm -hmm. accoutrements going on where you you realize like hiding would be difficult right now you stick you stick out like a sore thumb um there's definitely a moment where so junie has like vibrant blue like dragonfly-esque wings and there's definitely that moment of like she freaks out that maybe her wings have lost their color and there's that like your cat or your dog try to catch their tail where she just like spins trying to see like oh my god is it there is it there is it there is it there 
Oh, 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 Parsley, are my wings okay? They look fine. Okay, no. oh. Hey, no, you can look there in the reflection shiny. in my lantern. Oh, you go. oh, Ooh. oh, okay, okay, everything's good. Okay, yeah, okay. You look just the same. Okay, okay, thanks. Oh, this place is creepy. Yeah, this looks like home. Really? Uh huh. Why would you want to live someplace like this? We don't. That's why we came here. But now this place is going the same way, so that's uh, that's not good. Wait, there's there's more of you? I mean, a couple, yeah. Oh. But they... uh, there's a, there's also other ones, and if this is happening, that they might also be here, and that's real bad. They they look a little different. Yeah, it... I don't want to be friends with them. Did any of your family come with you? Uh, I don't think we really have family, not like oh. you, but like we're all just one one big family, maybe. Wait. But they here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question and it might be a little impertinent. And my my grandmother says sometimes I ask questions that I shouldn't ask. But um, where do baby imps come from? I've never seen a baby imp. <gasps> Why are you? I mean, you're the first imp I've ever met. Am I a baby? I don't, I don't <laughs> feel like a baby. Um, do you poop your pants a lot? Because that's what I've my never baby... I've pooped at all in my life ever. <gasps> I don't know if I'm jealous or I feel really bad for you. I'm, I've seen what it, what it looks like and I've seen what it smelled like and I've seen what it tasted like and that was not good. No. Do you eat food? Sometimes. Huh. That's so weird. Wait, sometimes. Uh, then what do you eat during other times? Yeah. What do you mean other times? Do you, do you eat babies? No. You can tell us. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I've never like, tried. That seems mean. Why would I want to do that? I mean, I don't know. Why would you want to bring uh, the void with you? Well, I didn't mean to. I, I don't. I, Wait, so I, it was your fault? Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I'm here, and the void is here, so maybe. I, I mm. hope not. But, you know, we ran here. I mean, my grandmother followed. my grandmother never believes me when I say it's a coincidence, so I don't I don't think coincidences are real. Oh, good. So not that, not, that I'm, <laughs> not that I'm saying it's your fault, but it's your fault. As the group of you are walking... <laughs> Are you as you're walking through this world and watching everything kind of grow darker and paler, um, and it starts to wear on you um, because deep down uh, there's there's a light inside of each of you, and that light is starting to be extinguished. It's being shaded, not so much extinguished. There's there's a shade that's falling across a shadow that's falling across the light within you. I'm going to have each of you make a heart check target number. Five. Um, if you uh, to to this is essentially resisting um, becoming kind of forlorn over all of this and, and being hurt, you know, being being you know, hurt in your soul. I love to shoot myself in my own foot. Um, Junie is afraid of the dark. Is this something I should? <laughs> um, that's fine. We can. Uh, not to like disimpose, not to like you know impose disadvantage on myself, but I love good gameplay. <laughs> sure, uh, I mean it, it's reasonable. I think that um, yeah, if, if if like darkness of the soul, darkness of the light within you is if that qualifies as part of darkness, it's not just like physical you know night. Um, call it disadvantage. Sure, when you are basically okay. uh, and each of your character has fears, and if you are affected or exposed to a fear, you suffer disadvantage um, until you find some way to face that fear or overcome it in the moment. And there are ways for you to do that, to help each other to do that. 
Um, in fact, some of some of the folk, uh, some of the playbooks have specific talents that are you know geared toward helping people overcome fears. So, and that's usually a heart check as well to do that. But this is this is essentially a resistance check for everybody. All right. What was our target? Target number five, heart. Two successes. One success. Done. Double sixes. It's two successes. Allie? None. None. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't get any. Okay, this is this is what happens. Um, the uh, um, Twitch is frozen on my end. I don't know. Yeah, if it just it else. just it just glitched, but it looks okay. like it's back. Okay. Um, I see people moving on the Twitch screen again. I had a little thing come up in OBS. It, yeah, it, it it hung up for a moment. Um, if you failed, um you uh take a uh, mark one condition on the emotional side that's that would be afraid for you if if you haven't got okay. any conditions marked yet if you succeeded with one um uh mark one condition on the emotional side or spend a spirit not to um and if you succeeded with two hits or more um you're fine yeah um it makes sense of it if I didn't, because I'm watching trees die and we're walking towards hot things. So mm -hmm. in a combination of life, everyone is not particularly happy about it right now. This is normal for me, so. Um, um. Junie um, will try to, so she does oh. have light magic. Real, real um. Quick note, quick note. And mm -hmm. with that check, make sure you mark um, skill, yes. spirit, or shadow based on your check. Just reminding people until we all get used to the system. And then back to you, Junie. Um, so I have minor magic and I have the talent Firefly Shape. Since I have minor magic, does that mean I have like all sorts of light magic or just access to turning into a firefly? Um, well, the, uh, the magic, okay. The way, the, the way this, let's describe this, the way this works is, mm -hmm. um, for every folk, there are some talents that are specifically described as being magic and it'll say magic. Mm -hmm. And after the word magic, there'll be a type of magic. That's the realm of magic. And so the way it works is the, the talent, whatever the talent is, that's what happens. Like you can do that thing. It might be something you can do at will. It might be something that's always active. It might be something that you spend a spirit on. Um, the realm of magic that goes with that, you can attempt to perform minor magic, simple magics in that realm. That is to say, as long as it kind of relates to that thing, in your case, light, for example. Um, and a minor magic can do anything that a normal body, mind, or charm check could do. You just do it through magic. So as an example, if you wanted to distract someone um, so that one of your friends could get past and round behind them and sneak past them or something. You might use a, make a charm check to kind of get their attention, right, and kind of keep them focused on you. Um, that's something you could do with a charm check. If you had the um, thought realm of magic, you could instead make a heart check because heart ties into minor magics and flood their mind with random thoughts that distract them so okay. the, the end result is distracting you're just doing it via talking or via flooding them or their mind with with thought okay magic. well in that case then as it gets dark uh as it gets darker as they move along junie will just boop, turn into a firefly and light the way because it <laughs> it um illuminates an area the size of a small house so it, oh, it, it's it, a lot of light it illuminates all of you very well. It keeps uh, yes. keeps the darkness quite at bay. And she will she will perch on, um, and this is where I'm awful at names. Ag 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 ag. I want to say Aguilaria. Aguilaria. Okay, I was gonna say Christina Aguilera's shoulder, <laughs> and. <laughs> As sort of like an extra source of like comfort. <laughs> 
Fun fact, Aguilaria is the scientific name of the agar tree, and the agar tree is where you get oud oil from, which is where the name comes from. Is it A-G? What's but that? How is it, how is it spelled? Aguilaria or yeah. oud? Aguilaria. Oud is O-U. Aguilaria is A Q U I R or I L A. Okay, it is a Q. Okay, I did it right. Never mind. I, I thought yeah, maybe I had. Q. I thought maybe I had spelled it wrong. So I was going to change it on the screen. No, it, it's probably probably the actual. It's more closer to like Aquilaria, but yeah. whatever. We're fine. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Uh, but yeah, I um, just thought that was a fun name. It is. <laughs> and uh, as as all of this is happening now, a couple of days are passing, and you see up ahead too now. Um, a, a a low sloped mountain with a plume of smoke that is coming out of it and um aquilaria you know that that's more smoke than normally and is trailing normally out of that thing and there's a faint the faint glow of orange um kind of right at the at the top of the mountain um yeah. not un not uh, not unlike similar. sparky's lantern light fair enough but yeah, so Aguilaria's pace just gets slower and slower the closer we get. Hey, it looks like we're real close. Uh, at one point, doing when, okay? Uh, at one point in pixie form, Junie will look at Sparky and say, I'm not going to lie, but this is looking more and more suspicious. <laughs> like a mystery. Have you considered an alibi? Like a book? Yeah, <laughs> like a book. I do like books. I'm um, sure that that's what that means. She'll, she'll pop over to Parsley. Um, I'm a little worried about our imp friend. He doesn't seem too bright. <laughs> I mean, like, not bright as in, like, a light way, because, like, he gives off light, because he's got this, like, lamp thing that he does. Yeah. But I mean, like, in the head. Um, hold, on. hold on, let me assess the situation. Uh, hey, Sparky, can you tell us anything that is actually really nice about this place? You know, since you've once lived here. What makes it so livable? I mean, I didn't want to live there, but uh, I was never cold. That's something. Okay, that, 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 that's a check mark. Anything uh, else? Uh... There was always plenty of rocks to do stuff with, like make rock sculptures. Okay. Art is a sign of culture. That's maybe true. It's not maybe it's not his fault. Maybe this is just you know, he has to he and anyone else has to just deal with what they got. So yeah. yeah. Uh, he's not I actually uh, and she leans into uh, G uh Junie's I, I Hey, uh, he's still on the radar, hmm. but not completely suspicious. It's not, not yet. So, like, a person of interest. Yeah. Y you okay. know what? Hey, Sparky, why don't, why don't you lead us? I don't know where we're going. Oh, thank you. I mean, we're, we're heading down this path, and we see all this, you know, smoke in the lungs. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, think you, I think you'll be able to figure out uh, our way. Uh, unless uh, she looks to um, Aguilaria and... Just kind of noticing how the distance between uh, um, the distance between everyone and how she doesn't seem like to be in the front. She's like, uh, yeah, you seem you seem well qualified for this. Uh -huh. Come on, prove, prove to us. Um, Aquilaria does seem like a little worried. That's probably because of the smoke. Because my people are saying where there's smoke, there's bad things. Mm. And, you it's know, usually for... fire, but sometimes it's something else. But it's usually fire. Um, you can like... like scout ahead and make sure that it's not dangerous because um, I feel like maybe around here that are there are things that can kill us that won't kill you. So if you set the traps off first, it's all good. Mm -hmm. You think there's traps? No. Did I set <laughs> traps? Uh. I'm gonna pick up a rock from from like the side of the road. All right, and I'll chuck it forward onto the path. <laughs> right. I think we're good. We're good, everybody. <laughs> There's no traps. We're good. All right, let's go. And I'll hop along 
forward. Sparky in the lead. Excellent. <laughs> Heading into um, the volcano the territory. You start making your way. Um, you know, and, and as we're going here, of course, there are day and night, and we're just kind of montaging our way through uh, through the travel to the next really interesting thing, which is about to happen right now. Ha <laughs> ha! With a half an hour oh, left to go in this session, um, you are uh, making your start making your way up the slope of the of the volcano when there's a rumble, Ooh. and the, the rumble, and another rumble, and then another rumble, and that glow that's up ahead of you starts to get brighter. Um, and oh, as you're making your way up, you see, Whoa. starting down the side of the mountain, two different spots, one kind of off to your right, one kind of off to your left, there are little rivulets, little rivers, little streams of glowing orange that you are in between, and they're coming down Hell no. You. Hell no. Aguilarius. It's full on back paddling at this point. And they're making Remember their way. Remember what I said about the void you. water and how you shouldn't touch it or drink it? Same thing for the lava. Do Same thing for the no lava. Heat. Don't drink it. Don't even think about it. I know it looks delicious and it's all glowy and cool. Don't drink it. Oh, heat. Yeah. And it moves much faster than lava should. It's not right on top of you yet, but it's coming. It's coming quickly. It's very liquid. It's very fast. It's strangely fast. And, um, and by stream of lava, I mean it's like five feet, you know, five feet yeah. wide. It's it's not like this Mississippi River wide brrr, on both sides of you. I mean, that's pretty, pretty darn big for some of us. It's enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no. Backpedaling, full on. Don't like yes, heat. So I, out. Oh, oh, are you Please. sure we should be going this way? Because uh, it seems like a little risky for you folk. Uh, you're the one who is in the lead. I'm not the Buddy. one who chose the destination. Did, did, did you think we chose the destination? I don't see any unicorns. Uh, partially is <laughs> in the midst of just like, I've gotten myself into this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what um, have I done? Is it, uh, um, Junie wants to fly up a little higher and look around for like cover. All right. Uh, I'm a little confused about what to do, Parsley. Maybe, you know, you have a cool head on your shoulders. Maybe you want to, like, uh, give some orders or something? Uh, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a rabbit out of, <laughs> of the forest. This is... This... I was going to say, have we moved into open territory? Like, are we standing oh, in a rocky terrain it's, it's area? Op- yeah, it's it's fairly open here. There's like the occasional, okay. there's the occasional kind of scrub tree or brush that, you know, like those 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 types that just kind of will grow almost out of cracks in the, yeah, in the rock yeah, yeah, where yeah. like there's some amount of soil and water that would accumulate down there or there's groundwater that can be reached. Um, so things right. do grow, but it's just kind of spotty here and there. Um, and you know, now that you mentioned it too, what the the rivulet of uh, of 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 uh, magma on the right um, kind of rolls right up on top of one of these, and it catches fire. And now there's a tree that like the fire is creeping up the tree, and it you know in a matter of oh, the next few minutes, yeah, the tree is going to be like a torch. Out. Yeah, so it it, it looks like uh, like <laughs> no like, She's like the tree the, the tree person is getting ready to leave. Unless yeah, the tree is oh, my God, ready. Like a tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, Junie is going to uh, turn back into a firefly. Okay. And so one of her specialties is helping others. So Junie wants to try to identify like a, a safe path or just like a, an easier route to take and try to lead the party that way okay um this is uh yeah you're kind of looking for something this is a sense you know senses sort of thing so it's a it's a mind check um if you fly up a bit um and Mm -hmm. get a get a good lay of the land um 
you can uh i'll give you advantage if you if okay you kind yes. of se- if you <laughs> separate yourself from the group well you know as a as a uh. firefly <laughs> oh, excuse me i can fly very yes. fast and you are very fast that is true so yes. you could zip up really so, quickly yeah. yep. get a look and then zip back down pretty quickly okay if anybody has seen legend when i invented this power that's the, that's how fast that firefly moves mm. um so what's my uh we'll call it target number five okay to uh to discern a good um, that route. is one success mark spirit uh and you see that uh like when you get up high enough and you kind of really look and pay attention to it for a moment, you see that these two rivulets of, of lava are coming down right from either side of some sort of outcropping, some sort of, but it's, it's, it's a strange outcropping. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like smooth and kind of, cur- you know, like curved edges and stuff. It looks very straight and angular and there's like, like it's something built up there and the lava is coming in the magma is, i'm going to use both terms is coming from either side kind of down and it's like if you were to continue up and stay kind of clear of the lava on both sides you will get funneled kind of right into um wherever this like at the precipice of uh the crater of the of the volcano where this this building is um but as you get closer and closer of course the lava will be nearer and i nearer will to you I will flash my butt at them. Blink, 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 blink. (laughs) And like lead them in a a safe way. Is she blinking at us? Well, there's nothing else out here blinking, so it definitely gets your attention. (laughs) (laughs) You blinking at me. You can just blink your eyes at me, sir. (laughs) Yes, go towards the light. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, for the record, there's nothing in that description of the Firefly thing that says you can't talk. Oh. So, like, I, if you want to be able to talk, you can talk. Um, Judy's going to save that for later. Okay. <laughs> That's one thing to That'll keep to, One thing to know about the game to keep in mind is that, like, it, there's a lot of places, like, this, these, these talents aren't, like, half column descriptions like Matt you know like D spells can be and everything there's like it's a couple of lines that describes what it is and if it's not in there you can flavor it in different ways if you want it's like a magical world so if a fire you know like you're a person you're just in a firefly form you can still talk if you want that to be the thing cool so um yeah you got flicker 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 um and the mm-hmm. the firefly your firefly friend pixie friend is flying up the slope it appears it is handy to be able to fly. She's going to come back. I hope she does. <laughs> she doesn't look like she's coming back. Oh. Uh, Maybe that thing is going. permanent where she turns it into a firefly. Junie zips back down and like sh- like shoves into Sparky's back to like push him. <laughs> Damn. And I'm going, then I'm going. Zips back and then starts off in the same direction. Parsley, Junie's mean sometimes. Is that normal? Or is, does she just hate me? She, she, yes. She can be a butt. She flashes her butt. Yep, that's a butt. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's keep going. Let's... Like, Parsley still does not like what's going on, but it's like, ah. Uh... Yeah, I forget. What better Why way we're to here? go than up? What, what, what's the point of this? Is there like a telescope thing that I remember that right? Are we just looking through a thing at the top of the mountain because I don't, I don't see anything up there. It's just a lot of fire. Should there be like a house? Uh, there, there, there's a ruins, and you guys should totally go and find them and then when you find the ruins there will be a telescope and you should be able to use the telescope to look for unicorns and that's all i got for you i'm going over here bye huh. i mean i can't i can't blame He's you full on freaking out. okay uh should, full should, on we, freaking. Should, should, should we like try to talk her into coming along or should we be cool with her just you know going the other way i'm not sure what to do um, I mean, you can 
you can there's 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 different ways to handle this. You could role play this out and try to convince her to go. Um, if you think that there's like something like a de- well, she's Woodkin, so deep seated fear of fire might very well be there. Um, there could be like a simple it, you know you could role play that out, or you could go ahead if you if you were more confident in this, you could try to make a heart check and just try to convince her to 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 face her fear. That one, that doesn't I mean her, that doesn't parsley. mean her fear will go away forever, but it means that her fear will like she'll feel better about trying it if she has you helping her, and that's what heart is all about. For the record, she has a fear of heat and dryness. There you go. <laughs> I actually wrote it down as drought, but mm-hmm. this we, can, to a- we can extrapolate that, certainly. <laughs> it mean, it's reasonable for her to be afraid of fire. <laughs> yeah. It is. Maybe not you lighting paper on fire, but you know, large fire. <laughs> um, and, and if and since it's a fear, it means that she's also suffering disadvantage on things right now, too. So if you were to make that heart check and bolster her courage, um, she would no, she would not suffer that at least for for a time. So you would actually, no from a mechanical standpoint in the game, you would help help her. What do you think, Parsley? Do we do we let her go or? <laughs> Jenny can handle it herself, and she just hops um, over to Aguilaria. And as uh, as she did once before to Sparky, she's going to do once again. The uh, the, the river is light, kind of just hop onto her, as if clinging on to her legs. Like no, 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 we we come this far, <laughs> no. No, my effort. Oh, yeah, this makes sense to me. I'm gonna help. Up, up. Hey, come on. Yeah. It's this way. Let's go. Okay, come on. I see There's them as hanging us. one off of each leg, just for the record. Two of us and one of you. Come on, let's go. Come yeah, on. Stick together, literally, sometimes. And and there is a way to do this too. Or since both of you are doing this, what we could, what we can do is have one of you make that heart check, and if the other person is helping. Um, normally you can, sp- like, if you're making a check, you can spend a spirit to give yourself an extra die on your check. If you're helping someone, you can spend one of your spirit to give someone else, um, mm. the die on, on an extra die on their check. So one of you could be making a heart check if you've got a good heart score and get an extra die from somebody helping if they spend spirit. I do have a good heart score, but I feel like Parsley also has a good heart score. Oh, not, uh, she's uh, so par. So uh, I, I'd say Sparky would get the lead on this. She'll All just right. be like, just, just, just come on, listen. We got an expert right here that can help us. Does uh, Parsley? Do you would, would you like to spend a spirit and? Yes, I will. Give an extra die to Sparky. For the record, the extra die that you get out of spirit is not advantage. So on a given check, you might gain advantage for some situational thing where you gain a die, and then you also gain a die from the spirit expenditure. There are two different Ooh. rules. Okay. So it's it's the that's you could potentially, if you had a trait of four, you could potentially roll six dice in the game. That's the most dice you would ever roll. But you've got ah. uh, you've got a a heart check target number five with uh, with an extra die because Parsley is like, come on, you can do it. <laughs> I don't I want to mimic success. your voice. That's that's mean. <laughs> <laughs> one success. It is a spectacular voice. That 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 will that will do it. Um, the uh, 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 your friends help. They're like, oh come on, you can do it, and so you can react to that how you how you want to. Um, but effectively, while you're in this environment. Um, assuming that it doesn't suddenly become exacerbated in some way, like if the volcano were to, oh I don't know, full on erupt. That would be a different yeah, story, but as okay. but as long as there's just like you know, rivulets of fire uh, <laughs> streams flowing down here, like you you've got your friends here to help you, you feel okay about that, so you're not suffering the effects of, of your okay. fear uh, for right now. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay. so they're doing the <laughs> they're doing the pep talk, yep. and I will probably without saying anything more than like a a quiet. Mm, the whole time <laughs> <laughs> she's just as, as she's walking, walking forward. just getting <laughs> higher and higher pitch like this there is no fire because there's nothing to burn <laughs> see you were, we're all good problem solved there's me there's me to burn i mean one thing in this whole mountain 
<laughs> and you continue to make your way up uh, following your pic- uh, your pixie slash uh, <laughs> firefly friend um, <laughs> getting closer and closer and as you get as you get nearer you see that there is in fact like some sort of ruined old stone structure that was built here um, it lost to the ages one of these things that you know it this 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 building may not have been intact um, for for a millennium. It's 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 hard to know for sure. It's been here for a very long time, and you can make out the shape of some sort of some sort of object, some sort of v- vaguely telescope shaped object <laughs> on the roof of this thing as you get closer and closer. Um, but of course, also as you're getting closer to the ruin. Um, and to the telescope that you need so badly to find your uh, your unicorn friend, you are getting closer and closer to the fire because the the two rivulets are kind of funneling you closer and closer. Um, so th- the the lava is not terribly far on either side of you. And uh, Juni, from your high vantage point, you see this first. There's a ripple in the lava. There's another ripple there's something like the the lava is just not not just moving down but there's like a little um and it becomes apparent there's something in there and junie (laughs) uh junie will fly down and all of a sudden the firefly goes guys there's something in the lava oh my god (laughs) And yeah. as you are informed of this, out of the lava off to your right, um, a snake or eel or something, some like, you know, vaguely snake like form, no legs, just a head and a long tail, but with wings of fire come flying out of the lava and starts flapping its way toward all of you. And I need everybody here to make. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, a reaction a dex or no, no, a body reaction check um, in the game. Um, there's your basic check where you make the check and you 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 can you can find advantage and disadvantage and apply spirit and all this sort of thing. It's like your character is making a concerted effort to do things. A reaction check is just a straight up. You have to make this check real quick. It's going to determine something real quick. In this case, it's initiative. Um, these types of checks you never mark um, spirit or skill or uh, shadow for. It's just a quick check to, to, to determine something really basic. In this case, um, a body check. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, I completely screwed that. No, that's wrong. That's not how initiative works in this game. <laughs> I was thinking of a different game. Um, I designed too many games. Um, hold on, hold on. Rewind. <laughs> rewind, yeah. Rewind. <laughs> um, no, it's- It's in replay. <laughs> It's in replay. We'll go back to um, Junie. Since you knew um, that this was kind of incoming, we're going to start with Junie. Unless somebody mm-hmm. really wants badly to go before Junie, um, and if that if that becomes the case, then there becomes like a check. That, you know, you, you make checks against each other. Um, but otherwise, Junie can go first. And the way initiative will work is Junie will decide who goes um, after you. Okay. Um, and then it'll get passed around the group so that until everybody has a turn, and then we go back to the top of, you know, or not to the top of the order, but like whoever goes last gets to choose who goes next in the next round, and it can be themselves. So you could potentially go twice in a row. Um, and since I don't really have turns, that is to say, like you, you guys make your actions, and based on what you do, and I describe things that are happening to you, and sometimes if you fail at checks, then other things happen as well. So it's mostly like this thing is flying at you. Junie, what do you do about that? Um, is my so as someone who's always paid, played very combat heavy games, is my goal to kill it or to escape? Um, it, well, here's here's the thing. There, basically, the way any challenge works is that you need a certain number of hits to overcome the challenge. Most okay. of the time, you need one hit. You succeed, you you do the thing. Sometimes, you know, the, the boon gives you something extra. That's nice. Um, sometimes a more uh, uh, a more difficult challenge will like might like a tougher challenge might require two or three hits. And those hits can come from multiple sources. Like you can work together. One person can, can get some hits and another person can get some hits. Okay. Um, when it comes to creatures, you can quote unquote, you basically, you, you're looking to deal with them. You can fight them, but okay. you can also 
trick them. You can talk to them. Um, you could certainly run away if you wanted to just outright get out of the way. But you could, like, if you had a, a, a if there's a creature coming after, you, you could try to lure it away. You could try to trick it if it has a, you know, if it can be spoken to, if it's sapient in any way, you could try to, to reason with it or, or intimidate it or, or fight it. And, and basics, it becomes a question of like, you know, body versus mind versus charm. So. <laughs> and, they, um, and they're all Judy, equally ac- applicable. They okay. all can kind okay. of get you the same hits. So Junie goes Eep! and pops back into pixie form and goes, um, uh, my, my name is Junie. What's yours? Let's be friends. <laughs> and, um, you'll have to let me know. So, uh. Junie has the talent height or flight. Okay. And I can spend a spirit to make a friend the same size as me. Right, because you you could you could either give you 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 chose size over wings. Yes. Yes. You you can make somebody the same size as you, or you could have given them wings. You chose it to be the size, so you could make somebody very very small to be able to hide or something. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, you could you could do that. Can I try to make this big lava eel a little lava eel? Uh, the lava eel is not a friend. I I introduced yeah. myself and I said my name and like God. I asked. Okay. Um, well, what I'm gonna do is <laughs> what I, I, uh, first I'm gonna do this. Like for the uh, the fight uh, the the or the the for the talent, does it have an A in parentheses after it? It does not. Okay. For the record, everybody, if you're if a talent has an A in parentheses, that A is for action. It means that that if you use that talent, it is your action for the turn. If it does not have an A, it's like another thing you can do in addition to whatever your action might be. And, and so, in your case, Juni, your action is going to be to try to befriend the lava, mm-hmm. the yep, lava yep. snake, the flying lava snake eel. Um, so let's see a charm check, and oh, we're gonna make that a target number of six. <laughs> Little six. <laughs> Because it's, cause, cause it's a snake eel fire thing. <laughs> oh, two successes! <laughs> called it. Um, you, you, you don't. You thing. don't. You don't so much make friends with it as you uh, you tame it. So how does that look? How do you tame it? And uh, uh, like you effectively, I'm going to say like with the success, you only needed one because it's, it's not a tough creature to deal with. You only needed one. You effectively tamed it. Like it's at least for the time being, it's, it's, you know, friendly toward you with the boon. Like you can take it with you if you want to, like you can have like a little, a little pet. <laughs> um, so, you know, Junie has spent a lot of time amongst the trees and studying different flying creatures. And you know, what is a lava eel, but you know, a very angry, I don't know, peacock? Like, (laughs) you know, so it's all about body language and like flight pattern. So Junie, um, you know, flutters her wings and does the like like uh uh doing the lava eel dance yeah she's doing she's doing a lava eel dance it may or may not accidentally be a mating dance but Judy doesn't actually know <laughs> um, so what find out <laughs> but she does know that like you know generally for flying c- creatures this is a way to to uh show submissiveness <laughs> To be like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to hurt you. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not here to date you either, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so you, yeah, you find common ground in the fact that mm-hmm. you both fly and it sort of, you like, it starts to mirror you and starts to kind of pay attention to you and kind of mm-hmm. like, like, just like kind of looking at you and flying and, yeah. and you kind of get it under control and uh, it will essentially, it'll follow you around and you move might be able to get it to do something specific um but that, that'll be a, there'll be a check involved in that sort of thing um if you want to do the size thing you can do that at this point yes. because that's not an action so you make it yes. small mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoop. and it becomes small um and two more of these snake things come flying up out of the lava um the same side 
the same side and they're, but they're not shrunken. They're big. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and, uh, as, as you, uh, as the, as the, the camera pulls back from this and you've got your little, your little lava snake mm-hmm. <laughs> pet that's like miniature. Um, and these other two big ones kind of come out and they hiss and they snarl and they start flying toward uh, the group of you. Um, and, and, uh, the group, uh, the other three of you kind of turn and like, you know, like, can, <laughs> can you do that with these two? And like, they're, 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 they're <laughs> flying toward you very quickly. Um, and, uh, uh, uh um, Aquilera, you, uh, for a moment, look up at the top of the of the ruin where you see this shape uh-huh. of this kind of telescope looking thing. It's basically like a big telescope on a stand, um, and right. you can't you can't make out a great deal of detail, but you can see the shape of the thing, the silhouette of it. Um, and there's a tremble in the ground, um, and everything shakes, and the glow from the uh, precipice from the crater of the volcano glow gets it increases it gets greater it, it, it brighter orange um and uh the the snake lava the lava eels hiss even louder and as you're feeling this tremble and tremor and everything's starting to erupt around you, and it hasn't truly erupted but it's it feels like it's growing toward that it's um, aquilera uh you look up and you see the telescope the shape of the telescope and a piece of it falls off and that is where I'm going to end this session of Good oh, Strong no. Hands. Oh, hang on. Of course it is. It was so close. To... Um, <laughs> we will pick up with Junie having just gone. So you'll be able to, uh, at the next session, you'll choose who, and we'll, we'll pick up right at this point here. Um, mm-hmm. We know that there is an imminent um, uh, bad things, potentially, from the volcano. The telescope um, is uh, will is in disrepair, um, and you have two uh, lava eels, which were suggested by the audience. Actually, if anybody was paying attention to the chat, hey! <laughs> and they Good asked suggestion. for, I also asked Great them job. for a number one, two, or three. They chose three because when you're asked a question in a suggestion situation, you always choose either the very largest number or the very <laughs> the smallest very number, very smallest depending very on what you want. <laughs> um, so we got, so we got just for people who are watching and you, were, if you were wondering, that three was the number of. Uh, lava eels that are attacking so that is good strong hands um you've you've gotten your made your way to the telescope um assuming all goes well and you can figure out how to use it uh you can find yourself a unicorn and uh continue from there but right but right now you've got more you've got bigger problems Um, guys i've got three ticks on my shadow track and i'm so excited (laughs) (laughs) um so, <laughs> so for uh, for all of us, thank you for joining us, um, everybody who came by to watch, and for people who uh, provided uh, suggestions. Please come back for the next three Saturdays, this same time, one to four p.m. Eastern. We'll be doing this just like this. I'll continue to ask questions. You're going to help us tell this story. Um, and uh, real, real quick around the horn to each of you, if you want to tell people who you are, if they can find you on social media, or if there's anything else you want to um, promote or pimp feel free to do it uh liz um my name is liz you can find me on twitter at fantastical um and every now and then i pop up on the uh corpses and curios uh halcyon by night stream and we'll be doing something on good friday so um good friday Black Friday. Oh. <laughs> There's a Friday involved. <laughs> One of us. It's a Friday. What is time? <laughs> oh, is it still only Easter? Jeez. Oh, God. I have to do this all over again? <laughs> Paladin Hulk, what about you? Who am I? Yeah. Yes. Jean Valjean. No, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, I love this. I love this session. Parsley's voice is my favorite thing about the whole yes. thing. It's Seriously. amazing. Awesome. Let's hope yeah. I don't ruin it. <laughs> you couldn't possibly. Uh, where you can find me next is Sundays over on Uncanny Adventures. I play Holt the Pirate Paladin who tries to make friends with all the evil pirates. I'm doing a good job making all the friends. Uh, one, I am befriended by chaining him to a wall and then telling him my backstory, which is literally long and really sad, so now he feels bad for me. And uh, well, that was about the time to let him out of its chains. Uh, then uh, Tuesdays, I'm joining 
a polished cryptid for a D&D &D campaign where we're suddenly teleported to a place none of us have ever been before and everything is a little strange so it's lost but make it D&D &D, and I don't really know exactly what it's going on but I'm a I'm a uh, what's that, what are they called I'm a Githsurai lord uh, I'm excited and then Fridays I'm in a monster of the week campaign over on uh, Raven's channel where I play Daniel Vanderveer, LAPD detective. We're looking for my daughter in the Fey realm and we're getting real close. We found a bunch of other kids that were kidnapped, but I don't care about those. I'm only interested in finding my daughter. <laughs> and then you find me here again. You are super busy. <laughs> I am. Yeah, um, that's Huna. Uh, I'm Huna Farron. Uh, I don't use my social media as often, but if you like to see uh, where I get a lot of my role-playing inspiration and such, uh, me and a couple of my friends, um, I'm one of the uh, head DMs for a subreddit called The Wayfarers Pub. So if you ever have a character that maybe a campaign has fallen off or might want to see a different um, storyline, we're always open to try to find something for you. There you go. And Allie. And I'm Allison, also known as Allie. And on Twitch, I have my setup self, myself set up as Allie Eclectic. Haven't done anything yet. Still working on that process because that involves, you know, things like camera equipment and, and computer that functions properly. So eventually, hopefully, I want to do some uh, some craft streaming. I think that would be super fun. And uh, my two of my best friends and I have talked about getting together and having ladies witches night where we sit around and be catty and give people stupid advice. You, you, you should combine the crafting and the witches, but as, and witches get stitches. <laughs> I like that and I might use it. <laughs> sure. I was thinking about other three of us because we, like I said, I'm broadcasting from a, an actual theater space right now. Um, we were thinking about, you know, we, we get ourselves together and we're all sitting there crocheting and knitting and doing needlepoint and giving advice and being strange. Hooray for all those things. Exactly. Um, and I am um, at Nerdburger Craig on Twitter. Um, you can go to Nerdburger Games. That's the company I own. I made all. I made this game. I made a bunch of others. Um, this game uh, kickstarted um, a little while back. It was successfully funded. There's going to be like a nice print run hardcover that's getting made. There's illustrations being worked on right now. If you would like to pre-order this game, um, which will help me to uh, know how many books I need to print, um, you can go to nerdburgergames.com to the shop. Um, and uh, there's a spot there to to do a pre-order if you want just a PDF or a pre-order for like to get a hardcover along with the PDF for free, um, um, or you can just wait till it comes out. That's fine too. Um, other games can be found um, at drivethroughrpg.com. And uh, so yeah, there you go. That's me. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, and for those of you who uh, come back next week, I hope you come with uh, suggestions and ideas and feel free to uh, to answer whenever I ask questions in the stream because it, uh, it worked out nicely. We had a lot of fun with that. So I'm looking forward to that it. Was um, bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>